Hello everybody, if it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Uh, joining me seemingly truly, as always, is my co-host Tyler. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Yeah, good to be here, man. Early show. Yeah, early show, third week in a row. This man is a hero. We all need to send Tyler some love. Uh, Tom, mm -hmm. worthless, as always, just completely worthless. Fortunately, we have Tyler. Also joining us for the first time on the show, uh, someone who I've gotten to know very well over the past year. Uh, Giannis, how you doing, sir? Very good to, to have you on the show. I'm very excited. It is kind of a dream come true here. Oh, it's fine. No. So really? we are going to talk today about what's the objectively best army. That's right. We're going to science this. And this is something that Giannis put into my head. So... Um, Giannis is, is a, a patron and a student. We've been working together a lot on models and hobby, but then also, much like myself, Giannis has a deep and abiding love of philosophy and sort of traditional uh, Socratic thinking, I suppose, is what we, we could use just to keep it simple. And he came to me a little while back with this idea around creating in a sort of uh, a matrix that one could evaluate on that if used in different ways could may, might lead to some kind of objective truth or at least that's what we'll explore today uh, so that is all in store but of course first the news rumor engine I saw some folks hoping that this might be an early sign of the one and only Usharan the Carrion King uh, I love that idea. I hope that's what this is. Some centerpiece model, some incredible model with the full release of Flesh Eater Quartz that we are hoping to see later this year. Uh, we've got a death rattle skeleton there and a, and a shield. Sure, sure. It could be something that has Any... nothing to do with death. And could it's be. just there's some <laughs> dead people on it. <laughs> it could be anything. Yeah. Presumably Age of Sigmar. It is definitely think, Age of Sigmar, yeah. That I think we can say. I think we can establish that, yeah. You honestly yeah. got any guesses on what this might be? Uh, no, I was wondering about the helmet. I don't think I've seen one of this uh, like this before with the little horns on the side. But mm -hmm. I don't know if they are in some form of death army. I don't know. Well, I think Older Graveguard had little horny helms. Um, so that could be like an incorporation of those two elements, like the newer Graveguard, like a sort of newer Graveguard design. Uh, we can just imagine the kit that doesn't exist yet through their corpses scattered on this on this scenic base, which it's either yes a piece of terrain or a scenic base. Like that's what yeah. it is. Cool. But it, it does look a bit bigger, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a, there's a decent size to this because those are both obviously in scale skeletons, right? So those are people. We're looking at like the whole person here, as it were, basically for the for the guy who's under his friend. Um, and they both look like they've been there quite a while. They're rather worked into the stone, as it were. Um, so my guess is, you know, it's it's something, it's some center, like some centerpiece model for something coming up would be my my easy thought. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. since Lumineth are always fighting death, it's a uh, new <laughs> Lumineth wave. Let's get going. We had, it's been a little <laughs> while. So this is Tyrion right here. Okay, Tyrion. there we go. Right yeah <laughs> logically there we go Clearly. yep okay so we had a couple of articles on city of sigmar so they had an article showing the remaining units oh you're doing Maybe. this in a weird order darn it i should have told oh, my you order. Order. it's my fault oh, okay. here let's do this one that first works. let's let's yep. do the uh let's do the the black talons crew first Black so you think i would i would know that by now i need to get on the same page with you about the order in which we're doing this we've only been doing this for a little while all right okay. black talents this was a complete surprise to me i don't know about you guys but and yeah, yeah. i think this unit looks phenomenal love the show it's my favorite as i said before age of sigmar media product they put out this black talon animated series on warmer plus i haven't watched all of it yet but it was amazing what i did see and yeah this warband looks looks just spectacular uh Giannis, what, what do you think about this i absolutely agree i love the show um i think you can see in the design that uh 
they were made for the show, so they took some more uh, differentiation mm. between the different characters. They added in the sorcerer there as well. Um, mm -hmm. Love it. Um, yeah, amazing. So I, I have to say, I'm a Stormcast player. I don't need more Stormcast heroes, but <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, but I do you need, need four you need, Stormcast you need heroes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, no. Uh, I love this thing, man. I'm all about these these people. Yeah, these are great. So I have not good. seen an episode of the show and never will. Put it out on Warhammer Plus, or sorry, put it out on Netflix or something. Or I'm not watching it. I'm not. I'm not subscribing to Warhammer Plus ever. You can forget that. Uh, so like, no offense to anyone who does. If you do and you find value in it, good for you. But uh, that's a big no from me, dog. Uh, there's too many streaming services and things as it is. I don't need any more monthly charges. Uh, mm. but. That being said, these figs are, I mean, this is the stuff right here, buddy. Uh, like every one of these is just dripping with character. I love how they're all, mm -hmm. they all feel different. You know, they talk about how like the, the one guy, I don't remember his name, but when he was the previous leader, the old guy in the lower right, it's people who watch the show will probably know his name. I read the article and like he was the previous leader of this group before Neve joined, right? Mm. and like they look somewhat thematically connected like they're both from that same chamber and you know that kind of thing mm. but then the other two just look completely different like you've got the big paladin guy with missing the arm plate you know or the, the bicep mm -hmm. plate on his armor just show them the muscles <laughs> uh the the sniper fantastic and then that like what is she a tide caster i guess is that what she's with her soul scryer or something she's a she's a i mean obviously an idk person but yeah i think tide caster maybe soul scryer if it's soul scryer one of those two whichever Probably one she is she looks amazing love the like veil look over the face yeah uh love the floating look with her by the tree like i get it of course there's a part of her leg that's just stuck in the tree but like, mm. who cares? It's fantastic. She really looks like like the cape movement and stuff is great. Uh, this is awesome. And hey, uh, Tyler, are you excited about the chance to have an IDK caster in your uh, your Stormcast? <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean that that's one of my favorite IDK models they've put out yet. It's like head to toe. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I really do wonder nice. how much this <laughs> this unit is going. This warband is going to be. I'm hoping it's not too far north of 300 points, but you know, if they actually have war scrolls that reflect the the power of this warband of this of this group, it's it's gonna be 300 plus would be my guess. I assume well, in the show they're like straight killers and just like really yeah. <laughs> get the work done. Like they're fighting basically armies by themselves, right? Right. Yeah. right. Okay, so they're 2,000 points done. Good. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. 2,000 points, you uh, cowards. Uh, <laughs> every one of these people is just bad BA enough to handle it on their own. Two up armor uh, save, three up ward, all the way down the line. Uh, they absolutely. can never have their ward save removed. Uh, they're all twos and twos. Neg four rend, five damage each. That seems no problem. We can get there. We can get a two thousand point thing. Yeah, let's go. Beat them on somewhere the between. Game. Right. <laughs> Somewhere between 300 and 400 would be my guess. Sure. Surely sure. not north of 400, but yeah. One would assume, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One little thing that I liked for the sniper, they have a caped option where she has the cloak above the head, but yeah, they also... Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I think they've mm -hmm. learned from the um, Underworld's warband, this with the lantern, the one. Mm -hmm. They had to cut off the cape, I think. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, I agree. Sometimes we just want to see the face. Right, yeah, yeah. And not just cut something away. Absolutely. Uh, all right, cool. Good stuff. Uh, so, all in all, fantastic. Looks super cool to me. Can't wait to see them uh, in, in person and what their rules are. So. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, what do you have next? You got some cities next? Or? Cities is next, yo, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you think these people are awesome and or you like anything we've talked about thus far or you're just excited for the show, don't forget to hit the like button or subscribe or something like that. It's uh, it's always appreciated and helps other people find the show, especially as we're live. The more of you that click that little like button, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the more of you that do it, uh, the more people come watch the show as it's happening. Uh, okay, so cities. We got to see the rest of these units. Uh, mm-hmm. So we got the new War Altar. That's what I've got up first. Uh, with this, like, priest and uh, 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 the photo of the picture of, of Dorian, uh, whatever, uh, on Dorian the back Gray. side of her. Yeah, the picture of Dorian Gray, thank <laughs> you. Because, like, that thing is is taking her damage or aging for her or something. That's part yeah. of the idea. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so that's very fun. Uh, and then I do really got... like her and this this model, the matriarch of the Great Wheel. Uh, actually, yeah. seeing some some good quality photos of this model. Yeah, I dig. Uh, there was a a guy on Twitter who did a nice breakdown of how well how good they're getting or getting better certainly at uh, faces and diversity. Yep. In, in faces and races and so on. And I thought she's a great example of this, this uh, Pontifex Sinestra. So yeah, really cool. No, absolutely agree. I love that we actually get female faces that look like female faces and not just yeah. a guy's face with a girl haircut on top or something like that, which is what a lot of older oh, sculpts look right. like, right? Yeah. Um, like they actually have a lot more, but beyond that, they have character, right? They've done a great job mm. of really building in character and as you said like body types and like really getting in there like look at this guy in back look at how great Mm -hmm. this dude looks with this like extra he's got that like double chin going on he's got the nice pudgy (laughs) cheeks right like nice deep crease here around the mouth because he's like a he's you know got that them big cheeks to create this line right here like Mm -hmm. man it's awesome uh so yeah it's wonderful uh uh, yes, I agree, um, Azoxy. He said the Turnip 28 community are liking to look at these Cities of Sigmar models. You're not right. I mean, a lot of this stuff would slide right into Turnip 28, like, no issue at all. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, then we got the big cannon. Uh, excited about new cannon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty sweet looking. Uh, have not seen the rules yet, so <laughs> I always get terrified when it comes to a shooting unit. So Not they that did we have a great share the record. rules on this today. Okay. Oh, did they? Oh, okay. They did. Yeah, okay. they shared the rules on the on the canon today. Um. So, well, like the question first of all, Giannis, what's your what's your take on this big canon? How do you like it? Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the canon, um, because I don't see why it would need these this shield before it. So in a fight, because they should be further away. I do love the um, cannoneers, so those characters behind them, the one drinking from the bottle, the woman in the back, um, they are outdoing themselves. So different body types, and they look more human, just like you said, more character, and more like it is a scene and not just people standing mm-hmm. around. Yep. Um, I love how he's got the the other barrel there, just in case he needs to switch out, right? Like, that's pretty, pretty mm-hmm. great. Um, so... The cannon, it has three different attack modes, Tyler. Okay. Okay. I'll have to pull this up. I missed this today. So it's got the cannonball, your traditional cannonball, just a good old-fashioned mm. cannonball. That's two attacks, fours, twos, neg two, D3 plus two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Two attacks instead of one. Good thing. That's We, we can never do a single attack. Now we've got the armor-piercing shell. 24 inch range, two attacks, fours, twos, neg four rend, d6 damage. So we go, we go completely random on the damage with the armor piercing yeah, shell, right? A bit of spicy rend, All right? But it's some spicy rend four. You love <laughs> to see it. Uh, okay. And then we got grape shot. That's a 12 inch range, five attacks, threes and threes, neg one, two damage. So pretty, pretty traditional okay. thing. We call that the Stormcast Hero Attack Profile: five, three, <laughs> five by threes, threes, one, two. Um, so yep. it can it can also just shoot a Stormcast Hero attacking at somebody. Yeah, or or a Grot Hero, depending on your. Or purpose. a Grot Hero, that's all fine. Uh, it's obviously not a, It's not as good as a Skaven Hero attacking. Sure. So Absolutely. let's not get too crazy. Yeah. Obviously, a Claw Lord is it is. A more dangerous foe than mm-hmm. taking the grape shot of a cannon to the face. So mm-hmm. when you're thinking, what would you rather be standing toe to toe with, cannon or claw lord? 
mathematically, they Age of Sigmar rules writers have answered that question. It's Claw Lord. It's Claw Lord. It's, it's, it's just the more dangerous thing to stand toe to toe with. Stand in mm -hmm. front of the cannon if you can. Get as close to that <laughs> cannon as possible. Okay. That's why they have to see it there. Okay, I get it now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So yeah, the blowback. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. Um, super cool. Love these dudes. And then we had one more. Uh, well, there's a couple more, but this is really the other one I wanted to focus on. Our mm -hmm. mounted hero knight guy. I don't know what this guy's name is. I didn't. I don't. I didn't remember his name. But man, I love this sculpt. Again, the helmet is dumb. Yeah. I want him to have a different head. But beyond that, I love this dude. Like this guy mm -hmm. looks great. Uh, the movement in this guy with like the banner blowing the cape blowing the sweep of the the horse's hair like yeah uh, it's like a painting what... in painting in miniature form yeah i'm like, here uh, for this guy yeah free guild mm. cavalier marshal my apologies that yeah. is his name okay i don't know if it was Tovarian who painted a death um a death corp creek model on a um Mm -hmm. on a horse it as was. well it reminds me of that somehow I would yep. have to have a look mm -hmm. at the, uh, uh, the picture again but it immediately came to mind also with the grittiness of the model and I think there's if you look at the others there's this yeah it's somewhat grim dark but grim mm -hmm. maybe connected to the idea of like Brothers Grimm so a dark fantasy world more or less um, which I'm not 100% sure about if I like it in the end um well there was this one cool dude with the who was just a cloak so the um assassin cloak and a knife and this hood here sure sure mm. uh by the way this guy does have a helmetless option so if you like i find that helmet yeah, completely nice. stupid he does have a helmetless option and yes his hair is also blowing in the wind with the, mm. the in the same direction as everything else so there you go uh mm -hmm. Very, very cool stuff. I mean, I I dig the living crap out of this guy. I just think he's cool as. Yeah. Yeah. He's home run. Makes me want to, like, it's weird to say, but, like, write a story about a model or an army centered around this guy, which <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that feeling with a model before. Like, you know, actually get some narrative going with, a, with an army with this dude as a centerpiece. It's, yeah, it's a home run. It's amazing. Yep. Yep. Love the big pistol. In the mm. notice, he's got the big pistol up on the front of the horse as well. So you know he can he he can. Uh, yeah. I I I'm sure whenever we see his rules, he'll have like a single pistol attack or something, right? Like it's mm. like, great. <laughs> Look forward to that. Those are always valuable. Um, yeah, fantastic. Great job on the paint job too. Whoever whoever happened to to do this in the studio, you did a absolute bang up job on this one. Like special shout out to the incredible work of the painters of this whole range. Um, mm. so a yeah. lot of this stuff really looks really, really, really looks good. Um, they're really selling this new range. Like, I mean, just to go back to this cannon, look at this like wonderful, like darkness down to the bottom of the red wood where it's catching, like, you know, where it's like stained from being yeah. down and in the dirt and getting, getting blowback and stuff on it. Oh, it's great. It's great. Just little stuff oh, like that. So, so much edge highlighting there in that model. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot. They, uh, they, they really. Somebody spent a lot of time tracing edges. Yes, indeed. But I think at least in some parts, um, they make it a bit easier. If you look at the cloak, it's it has defined lines, not as mm. some of the others. So it might mm. be or at his backpack where he has his um, sleeping bag or whatever it is, blanket. Mm. Uh, I think it might take contrast very well. So it is possible for. Uh, yeah, beginner painters uh, to paint it as well. Mm. Yeah, I would say. absolutely agreed. Yep. Okay, good stuff. Uh, I think that was all our news items, right? I believe so. Okay, very good. Well then, let's turn to some pick of the week. Uh, I am going to start, Tyler, with you, and then Giannis will go over to you next. Tyler, because sure. you grabbed the biggest list, so you can start us off as usual. Tyler, going just just nuts. <laughs> Go for it. Should be used to it by now. I'm, I'm trying to, to get it. you adjusted. Okay, excellent. 
Goonhammer, competitive innovations in the mortal realms, Mike's weekly article on the prior weekend's tournament results, Incarnate of the Meta. The Incarnate is back. If it ever left, uh, we were seeing it quite a bit in Seraphon's Starborn list. Yep. Doing the combination of the yeah, ranged mortal wound output with the rupture endless spell that makes the Incarnate wild. And then you feed it an endless spell like a Malevolent Maelstrom is often a popular choice to keep it leveled up. And you've got this thing that you cannot kill and you cannot retreat from while you're getting hammered with mortal wounds. And more mortal wounds. And it's just a lovely time, it sounds like, for everybody. So if you want to see some of the latest on what's going on in the meta, especially that, check that out. Mike does awesome work over there, Goonhammer. Miscast Podcast, they're back with Season 2. So the Owen Jackson, Darren Watson, Alex Q, they had on Matt Goldsboro talking about their GT they attended the other weekend. Can't remember the name of it. And... Darren had a, a really good analysis of different kind of list designs or list archetypes, like paths to victory. So, you know, one could be holding power. Another could be damage, just raw damage sure. and so on. So I, I think it's worth listening to just for that alone. And yeah, he's got, we're going to have him on the show at some point soon, talking about coaching and AOS. So we're looking forward to that. And then Rob and company, they had a great discussion with... Don or Dom? Dom. I hadn't seen this fellow before, but apparently he's an incredible sportsman. Uh, an amazing discussion, which complemented our discussion last week really well, Vince, on the art of sportsmanship in AOS. So nice. that, was, that was a phenomenal listen. Really enjoyed that show. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And that's it. Very nice. Giannis, what would you like to share with everybody? Um... So I'm going to share a German um, YouTube channel. So when I got back into the hobby a couple of years ago, um, I started at basically zero, not that far away from that now, but he encouraged me to keep going. It's a channel that focuses on all of the different um, tabletop that you can play. Of course, uh, there's Warhammer as well. Uh, he focused a lot on building terrain and it's tabletop sh workshop and um, yeah, Amazing mm. channel. It's a bit like this, uh, like uh, Black Magic Craft. So a lot of um, foam cutting and building. The latest one was a Mystic Temple that he, uh, yeah, in a few steps shows you how to make. I really like it. Nice. Okay. I'm excited uh, to check that out. Yeah, fantastic. We will link that down below. For myself, we're going to recommend the boys over at Cult of Paint, who recently did an episode on the very best of Evie Metal. We were just complimenting and talking about these wonderful Evie Metal paint jobs on this new Cities of Sigmar range. And so this is the very best of Evie Metal paint style uh, mm. and, and that sort of thing. So check it out. Uh, it's a good episode if you like looking at pretty models. I enjoyed it very much. And uh, the Call to Paint guys are always awesome. Henry and Andy and, and the rest of the crew are all fantastic guys. So all of that linked down below uh very good let's uh gentlemen let's move on to a little bit of hobby time uh and talk about what we've been working on tyler <laughs> i've been working on playing games as usual uh -huh. getting uh -huh. ready for for gateway gateway open yep so yeah if you can't come to nash con come to gateway open still on the same weekend it's uh, i think august 20th come Come kick my ass at, at Gateway Open, since you won't be able to at NashCon. I've made some adjustments to my Stormcast list, so you were giving me a very hard time. Uh, I did. I think I told you last week I had to move away from Scions. I'm, I'm going Stormkeep yep. to help with holding power, according to, like like Darren Watson said, that's that's a path to victory. That's been helping out a lot. Uh, Nine Cantor, Nine Draconis, Lord Relictor, Lord Castellan, the protectors are back in. Couldn't quit them. It's Ten protectors. In, in many ways, they never left. Uh, they never left. left. Yeah, uh, they had a, they had a, they had a good time against Archeon. Uh, they love being wizard finders. Go go doing some hunting of the Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse. Sure. Eight Star Soul attacks. Woof. Enjoyed that. Ten Vindictors, two by five Vanquishers, three Long Strikes. It's only three. I'm gonna have a T-shirt printed. The Far Striders, Ether Wings. It's good. It's been good so far. I have no clue what the hell to do about OBR. Or getting mortal wounds spammed to death with a cron spine in my face. But, but hopefully I can avoid those. 
<laughs> One can only hope. Just just dodge it. Yeah. Just don't play that matchup is sometimes just... the answer. <laughs> so fantastic. Uh, well, I hope you your your practice goes well and you return back to some painting sometime soon for whatever the next force is. Uh, it's going to be Stormcast. Yeah. That's, you got to get that done. painting. Got that new get, scheme. That, get that scheme going. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Giannis, what about you, buddy? What's been on your desk? I mean, I kind of know, given that we just talked recently, but what's been on your desk? Um, yeah, you kind of don't, because when you told me that uh, we will do this, so I had one, of, uh, one and a half weeks of preparation, yep. and I thought I wanted to push on an old project. Uh, you know it already. So I put my headless ghosts aside. They are standing here, and I uh, continued on my vampire count, and I have to zoom out a bit here. And I made some headway here. Oh, so look whoa. at this guy. Woo! <laughs> account. Uh, I don't know if you can recognize it. Uh, you might have seen it in your past. And I have attached the cape today. And ah. it still holds. Uh, this is going to amazing. be like this color at some point. And I might yeah. have to do it again. Um, because I think I know now how to build giant stomper caves. Um, yeah, and I tried the... So you recommended the graffiti. Uh, yep. I might have to redo that. So this might be our next mm. session. Yeah. I've been I've been having so much fun with him. Um, yeah, and very nice. Yes, uh, I love it. He's he's back. Uh, it <laughs> has been a hot minute since I've seen that guy. Good to have him back in the more back in the party. Yeah. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, the count. Uh, so for myself, I did not have a lot of hobby time because immediately after the show last week, I packed up and went like quite literally immediately. I hit off air and walked upstairs and out the door and got in my car and drove to Gen Con. I mean, it was within three minutes of the close of the show. I was in the car on the way to Gen Con and obviously I didn't get back until late on Sunday, but I had a little bit of time. Uh, and so I've been, I was keeping working on the towel. There's two more little stealth suit guys. One of them is already pink and needs to be cleaned up. And one has still got his little white lines before the pink goes over him. So I've been working my way through, through more of these guys to finish that up. Um, I also did, actually, a little bit of my time was dedicated to some traditional 2D art. Uh, like I was drawing, uh, I had to do a drawing. So, you know, it's, it's fun. Mm. A little classic pencil sketching and, and ink and stuff because I needed to make a new uh, D&D character picture for myself. So 2D art, it's always good to, to stretch the muscles and start just uh, doing some, some actual two-dimensional drawing. So... There you go. That's, that's cool. been my, my hobby week. Yeah, yeah, nice. it's a lot of fun. It's like it lines up with figure painting in the end anyways because it just the mm -hmm. more you do that, the more it informs like doing freehand and stuff like that, right? Not that yeah. I think I would ever have the need to draw a superhero modern uh, since that's mm -hmm. my next character is a, a like if you took Batman and put it together with a monodrone, which is a which is a modron from the plane of Mechanus. Uh, if you have anybody for our viewers, you know what that is. Uh, his name is Questrone, the mystery machine, the puzzle box. Uh, he mm -hmm. who TikToks in the night. He's got a lot of names. He's very, <laughs> he's a very, uh, very, very mysterious figure. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about that character. Anyways, so that was, it. but that kind of that kind of stuff, doing that kind of. Uh, drawings is just really practice for freehand in the long run. That's all it is. So there you go. Uh, okay. So uh, Psycho says, I heard to paint Tau and airbrush is important. Can be. I mean, I'm not doing any of my Tau with an airbrush. So, um, but a lot of times it's a very useful tool for Tau. Um, so there you go. Uh, okay. Very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's move on to our topic. Um, all right. Objective best. There we go. So we're going to dispatch with all of the nonsense. We're going to get straight into objective army analysis. This is a hard scientific process beyond reproach as we know and uh we at the end of this we will certainly have a simple and true answer as to what is the best army all right that was not in any way true uh 
but that's okay. There we go. Had to correct um, that a little bit. Um, but we are going to talk about how we can kind of define this. So yeah, as always, again, I do I do appreciate your show titles. They 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 get the people going. Well, and I that's that's <laughs> me wheeling it back, right? I'm not being as clickbaity as as I could be. Uh, sure. But as we head into the main topic, hey, if you haven't hit like yet, because there's a lot more of you watching than have hit that like button. Again, just uh, just clicky clicky, and uh, it's so easy and and fun and thank you and you make us happy. Don't you want to make us all happy? Also, my dogs are back there. Look at that; they're just they're back here sleeping, and they 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 will get very happy if you hit like. Trust me, they're there. Uh, you can always tell if the dogs are in the room with me if this gate is up. That's. Uh. The- that's the secret how you know. Mm. Okay. So, boop, sorry. Okay, overview. So, well, what are we on about here? What are we even doing? Uh, what we're talking about is, it's just like, is it possible to objectively evaluate an army through combined subjective analysis? Right? And if so, what can we learn just based on how people choose to subjectively evaluate the thing. There's always difference of opinions, like, and we're going to be doing subjective evaluations. No one is going to state mm-hmm. otherwise. Like most of these things, even if you base some of these things loosely on stats, even those stats are still uh, a, a subset of a subset of data, right? And not, it's, mm-hmm. we can't really put our finger on it and say like, this is a fact in the world that we can touch. Right. Like the Sears Tower is in Chicago or something. Right. Like that's a fact. You can go see the thing. I don't even know if it's still called the Sears Tower, but like that's a mm-hmm. that's an objective fact you could go verify. Right. Um, yep. Whereas this is like there's no thing you can say, like, well, an army has a 50 percent win rate. Well, how based on what matches, based on what yeah. tournaments, based on what time frame, based on what battle packs and so on and yeah. so forth. Right. There's always a bunch of variables in there. OK. But we can use the law of large numbers here, right? So this is a sort of wisdom of crowds potential exercise where if you have a bunch of people do this, you could aggregate together the results and potentially get at some kind of objective truth, right? Mm. And or at least how people perceive it to be true in in mass, Mm. written large. But I'm actually not as interested in that yet. What I'm more interested in is us... Hey, there you go. There's a dog. Um, what I'm more <laughs> interested in is us just kind of talking this through, sharing some scores from ourselves and from others who've scored it and why. And then maybe we make this sheet available to people, okay, mm-hmm. for them to fill out on their own, just for, for their... Not like as a survey, just as a sheet, to, as a way to organize their thoughts, Right. And kind yep. of have a discussion around, you know, what this thing is and, and that sort of thing, right? Okay. And uh, Giannis, since I haven't said it yet, thank you for putting this together. This was, yes. I was very excited when Vince told me about this and he was even more excited. Uh, this was right up his alley. So yeah, uh, very, very glad to participate in this. Thank you for having me here and sharing that. And um, you've shared it with quite a few people uh, already. And I could see your results. And I read all of them. At least, uh, yeah, I read all of them. Uh, mm. Those as well. Um, it's exciting to see this becoming something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Giannis is the founder of the feast here. He's the one who, as I said, originally came up with this idea. And and there we go. Because my I just heard my wife walk in. So this was an inevitability. <laughs> Uh, so the, I think to me, the individual answers, however an individual sort of says this, I think points to some kind of interesting truth about them and how they see the game and how you think about armies. I will say just Mm -hmm. going through this exercise for multiple armies was sort of revelatory to me and how I think about the game and how I thought about those armies. Because you kind of have this amorphous idea in your head, but when I actually like had to get down and like fill out the thing right mm. it made me think a lot deeper about a lot more dimensions of the thing right and why do i really enjoy this force or why do i really think this thing about this force uh right. so it was it was pretty fascinating okay 
So let's talk about the sections, because somebody said, who was it? Ghost Mutton said, we have to define what best is. I agree, Ghost Mutton. we got to define our objective evaluation and then weight it. We're going to do both here. Giannis, is there anything else you want to say on this before we get into the specifics? Um, I think, as you said, so especially if you do more than one army, you will have a broader picture of your own bias, and then you can mm -hmm. weigh them uh, next to each other, especially with the, those more subjective parts, because some parts are, when you've got the tournament data, they will be more objective compared to the more subjective parts, and there you can um, control yourself a bit. Let's put it like this. Mm. Sure. And so the idea here is we got different sections that are largely groupings of sort of the concepts on, on evaluative criteria for the thing. As I said, these are all subjective evaluations. We're not going to like, again, you can choose to base some of this on fact. Some of this could be rooted in fact. Some of this could be rooted in, in data. That's probably a better way to say it, right? But ultimately, I wanted to get more granular than a poll or a survey, right? Because I think that there's one of the things that sort of aggregates can do is hide individual variables unless you look at the actual, unless you plot all the data points and you can spot the outliers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this was like, it's interesting to me to have that done, to have this, these individual responses. Hello, dear. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Actually. Mm -hmm. On. Tyler's my favorite. Oh, there you go. Well, that's you're not alone. I know. Team Tyler. Although when I get my avatar, we're gonna have to do a team dogs. You saw that he sent it along today. Um, yes, I did. Yeah. Yep. So oh, um, we're gonna have to do team dogs, but uh, yeah. So I've got Dinah here, who is my parents' dog. We have a, we have a fourth dog now in the house. Yes, hey. in case three oh, retrievers nice. left enough. <laughs> um, and she has a really blocky head. Dinah. Oh. Amazing. The chaos. The Hit chaos. like for the chaos. <laughs> Hit like and subscribe. Okay, Dinah, come here. Come here, Dinah. Here, come here. Oh, God. Penny's like. Come on, Dinah. Here, this way. Come on. Nope. Nope. They're not moving. I'm sorry. I lost, I lost all control. Okay. I love you. She's trying to protect you from the chaos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go. Nope. Were they fed and out? Yes. Okay. All right, there we go. Chaos is perfect. Left building. Yep. Best part of the show. Every time. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay. So, uh, there we go. Now that that's done, let's talk about the first section, which is play style. So here we've got a couple different criteria, and these are all weighted differently with different maximum scores. Okay. So we've got rules complexity. Does it offer a wide degree of complexity for beginners and competitive players alike? So your perfect score here is an army with a low floor and a high ceiling, right? Balance, and in this case, what we mean is does its war scrolls each fulfill a different function? Does it have good sort of, you know, internal mechanisms where you, you have all of the, the roles you might need uh, to, to field an army and feel good about it, okay? Mm -hmm. We've got lack of NPE. Is it actually fun to play against? Does it allow for interactivity or does it do a bunch of unfun things? Right? NPE, got... negative play experience. Just Negative play experience. Nope, thank you very much. We, have, we use a lot of acronyms and it's good to explain those. <laughs> then we've got variability of lists, right? So how many different sort of lists can you have? The different play styles that are there that all are, are interesting. Does it mean they're all necessarily the same competitive le level? but that it offers that ability to have you show up with lots of different lists or different ways that you want to make the army your own, right? There's not just sort of mm -hmm. one cookie cutter list and everything else is basically a non-starter, whether that's because of rules or whether it's because it's so bad that it's just like you, you can't actually play it, right? It's a, it's just, it, you just lose at the top of one kind of situation, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Then we have internal power. Uh, does it have its own internally balanced ecosystem you don't have to bring other stuff into it other books into it other allies other things like incarnates to make it good right is the book yeah. self-sufficient okay so if on players you don't have to bring an incarnate it'll be okay you, right you know, 
you can you can make it work without without that piece it's fine yep okay then we've got psychographic profile and here we're not what we're, we're not testing how it leans into it but rather does it how well does it uh, offer something for all psychographic profiles right so how well yeah. does it cover the spread so a perfect score here is basically like it's a it'd be dead in the middle uh of uh having like uh johnny timmy spike right okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yep. gareth says what if my play style is that my army having npe is something i like well hey then you you can still rate it on the lack <laughs> of npe you would just pick an army that has a high npe right it just means that's not the objectively best army because overall npe is not good for the game like i don't i think that's a fairly non-controversial say thing to say that like in an interactive game the more we lower the interactivity the worse the game gets <laughs> right bold Very it's really bold. i'm making bold claims here but like in general if your army showed up had no care for what the enemy did or how they moved or what dice they rolled and you just won we would all agree that's a bad army <laughs> um one more thing here, maybe, uh, especially for the psychographic profile. Um, the idea was that you should not be punished if you like the um, look of an army and you are just not the type of player for it. So if you like orcs and you're not a Timmy, um, that you should be able to find something in, your, in the army as well. Um, and it's absolutely fine if an army is not, in, in quotation marks, good in the end. Because not all armies will fulfill all of the roles because fire slayers don't have that many uh, options right, there. Right. Um, that does not make your army bad, but the argument would be that um, an army that offers more here in this case would be better. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having like I I my it was actually interesting to watch this to to see what I scored all the armies because I, I played everything I play and everything I or I rated everything I play and everything I normally play against basically was what I what I rated right and see like things I have deep experience with we didn't do each of us kind of broke up and handled different stuff that we were all comfortable with we didn't sit there and rate every single army because some of it would just be guesswork we don't have the depth of experience right and it was actually interesting to see like, well, I really like this army, but it's a lower scoring army, right? But it's it nonetheless that the features it does have appeal to me greatly, right? And and that's where this breaks that that's where this is. Like we can say this thing is we're we're getting at something interesting about the nature of design. That doesn't mean you can't like an army that's not hitting sort of max score or something like that. Okay. All right. So that's playstyle. Power. Power overwhelming. Okay. So this is the this is just the raw power level of the army, right? So the quality of its rules, are they good? Does it interact with the current GHB? Right? That kind of thing. Okay. Uh, that's the sort of heaviest weighted thing in here, score being up to 15 points. And then you've got two others worth 10. Performance, does it win games? And healthy position, does it have a reasonable chance of winning and losing games at the start of the game? Right? Do you feel like when you're playing the army you have a shot? Okay. This is a fairly heavy section at 25 points, but it's not overwhelming. But pretty simple. We, this is something I think we can all understand. This tends to be the most common way that armies are talked about on shows like this, right? We almost spend 90% of our time talking about this, right, is often what happens. And then like another 8% talking about the previous section and then 2% everything else. Okay. So that's just power. Okay. Mm -hmm. Giannis, any thoughts about this one? Anything else we want to say here? Um, so here uh, I put in most of the points um, because I think uh, it's important. So uh, in total, if you have a look at the block, are we going to weigh the blocks already or are we going to do that later? Oh, they'll see the blocks at the end when we get there as, as to how they, how they totally stack up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, here you can find some uh, additional information in the um, meta representation. I looked at Wohammer and I think another one. I forgot the name. Um, yeah, sure, you can look like Honest Wargamer stats or Wohammer stats mm -hmm. or like, you know, Goonhammer web stats every so often. Like there's the, the meta watch articles, obviously, that come out intermittently. Like that's that's all. There's lots of stat things. And this, a lot of this could be sourced to that kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Verisimilitude. Ah. Uh, hey, Laura, how you doing? Good to see you. I hope I hope everything is well over there in Nottingham, Nottinghamshire. Uh, okay. So, uh, resonance. Uh, this is worth five points. Does it match a real life concept to create realism? And when we say real life concept, we don't mean something that exists in the world. What we mean is something that we can sort of there's a there's a way it squares. You can picture it working like this army has a consistent theme and resonance to the human condition or to a society or to something we would experience and go, yes, that logically makes sense. I understand how that thing can actually work. Right. OK. It's something that you already know from your everyday lives. It doesn't. It can be fictional. It can be something uh, that you just have seen in in Lord of the Rings. I don't know. Orcs, you know what they are. Um, and this is then a connection for you to identify with something. I would argue. Yep, absolutely. I mean, when you think about something like death armies, I don't. I've never seen a necromancer. I've never seen a zombie in my real life, right? But we're all very familiar with the concept. It's all very. It sort of speaks to something about the human condition, like, oh, the, the willingness to go, like, the the fear of death, the what happens after you're dead, the, the, all of this stuff, right? Like, there's there's resonance there to it, like this lust for power and being willing to sacrifice your own life to, to gain power, that kind of thing, right? Okay. In, in one of the um, uh, grids I read also about the Nighthaunt, um, he linked some... Uh, I think it was death metal uh, videos that fit to the or black metal videos that fit to the um, to the uh, to the theme, and I think this could be something as well that can be connected to it. So it is a very broad range of what what you attribute to it. Yep. Then you've got characteristics, and this is really can it be summarized using a few words? So like, and the idea here is not that that's. It's not about being summarized in a few words. It's, it's that it has characteristics that are cohesive that you can look at and go, uh, this is a thing, right? And it has a way, something for you to grip onto right away, very simply. You can look at it and go, this is awesome because this, right? Uh, so it, it's just, it's a handhold that you can easily grip onto and understand what it is. So that's worth five points. Uh, so... Uh, it's very funny. Uh, feel of the model range. Um, do the models actually fit the characteristics as described? So the example here would be like Stormcast as the stoic protectors of the realm, right? Do they feel like that thing? These things have a, a concept, a theme. Do they actually seem to fit that theme well? And then the, on this same way, the feel of play. So not just the model, but also how it's playing. Right? Does it actually play in the way it's described? So it's got this this particular sense of how it's supposed to to act. My easy example here would be something like Iron Jaws, where it's just like a ready, rare, and to go in your face force. Can it actually play like that? I mean, the answer there is very much yes. So like they're going to score high on that particular category, right? Um, uh, so I can't go, sorry. Uh, go go for it. Of Behemoth, So if the sons of Behemoth are just standing around. I right. think they missed an opportunity there. Exactly. Yep. Um, is the model range compelling to paint and play to put on the table? Um, does it look good? Does it fit? All of that kind of stuff. And then the psychographic profile, does it actually play? So this is where we get into its expression of the psychographic profile as opposed to its capacity to suit psychographic profiles, right? Does it actually play like their psychographic profiles? Um, so, like, if this is meant to be a Timmy army, does it give a Timmy-like experience in play, right? If the story feels like a Timmy army, if, if their model range reads like a Timmy army, that kind of thing, does it actually hit that spot? Okay. So that's this section. Lastly, other. The grab bag section. Because there's a couple of those. So, um, the cost of the collection, pretty straightforward. Does it have you know a reasonable amount of money to collect it? Can it does it have wide secondary market availability? Um, does it like can it be painted easily for new painters? Like is there is it a hugely challenging army to get painted up, especially if you start, or whether you're new or or veteran alike? Is it just like a huge painting challenge? Uh, the variety, um, it has a wide range of silhouettes, forms, materials. Like it's compelling. That's worth three points. And then finally, the painting opportunities. 
uh, it's interesting and compelling to paint for painters of all levels. So also worth three points. Some minor ones on the end. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, so there's a, I would like to answer a question. So sure, uh, go for it. Lucas says, uh, what if some uh, if it's something that can be made into a joke, uh, does that add to its excellence? I think so. So for me, for example, uh, gits need to be funny. Um, right. It's something that I where why I don't like the new Dawnbringers that much so far. Um, they are too serious. And I like the old um, Empire figures with their puffy arms and all of those, this weirdness and the colors. Um, I think it belongs in there as well, at least for me. So um, I think it, yeah, belongs. Yep. Okay. Tyler, anything we're missing here so far? Anything else you want to say about all of our criteria? You're on mute, Tyler. You're still muted. I think it's pretty good. I like the delineations so that you can make assessments within the subcategories, right? Mm -hmm. If you care more, if your ob objectivity is more centered around performance on the table as opposed to some of these other factors that you might consider ancillary, you can do that. You can draw comparisons within the subcategory. So, so I think that's cool as opposed to just looking at the overall score emphasis. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you can pretty, always... You could evaluate on any any subsection, right? Like yeah. it doesn't have to be only total score, which is what you're saying, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So I think that's interesting. Agreed. Okay. So with that, then that means it's time for responses. Bam. Oh, and, oh good. Uh, uh, we need to weigh it a bit. Um, so there was one idea when I put the points together. The idea was that you have 60% of rules and 40% of models and paints and all of that because mm. the game needs to play well, then it is fun. Uh, and you can play chess, for example, with uh, just regular wooden figures and you will like it um, because it's a good game and that is more important than the other aspects, I would argue. Yep. Mm. Yeah, that's the general weighting is about 60-40. Yep. Okay. Cool. Then let's get in to some uh, responses and scores. Okay. Uh, Tyler, we're going to start off with you here, I believe. Uh, let okay. Let me go ahead and bring this up. Hadoop. That's going to be a little bit of small text on people's screens, but hopefully that is viewable. I, what I'm going to do here is since we have this... What we're going to do is we're going to take this, should have hid this, hide column. There we go. So we can see your responses. We'll just look at the, the name and then your response. There we go. So you're starting out here. This is, uh, wait, wait, this is, yeah. Uh, okay. Is this you or is this a different Tyler? Uh, what is the faction? Gets. Yeah, I did gets. Okay, this is you. Yeah, try, All right. try to do gets. <laughs> I thought this was you. All right. Yeah. Hit me up here, Tyler. So take us through your results. I'm sorry if that's a little small on everybody's screen. It's a lot of text I'm trying to fit in there. Hopefully everybody can just go full screen or something like that. But we, we will take you through the scores. Okay. So Tyler, what do you got here? I see. Let me let me let me hit your uh, your responses real quick. Rules complexity, twelve out of thirteen. Balance, nine out of ten. Lack of NPE, 7 out of 10. Uh, variability of list, 6 out of 8. Internal power, 8 out of 8. Psychographic profile, 6 out of 6. We'll just start there. So take us through your thoughts, Tyler, on, on this one. This is a pretty high rating so far, 48 out of 55. For some reason, oh, there it is. I couldn't find it. Uh, yeah. It was the last one. Yeah, so this was the last one that I did. It's uh, the first one was... in order on my spreadsheet, I'll first just one. say. Okay, so I was surprised that, sorry, I didn't, yeah, I was talking and thinking in my head. I was surprised at how high I came out with Gits. Uh, spoilers, this was the highest of all of my own assessments. Okay, so some of this may be off. I don't play the army. Some of it is based on trying to provide an assessment of my sense of the Gits player base. All right, uh, rules complexity, 12 out of 13. If the orientation is... How well will it cover the spectrum? Beginners, experienced slash competitive. I 
think it does a good job with that. Trug armies are great for beginners. They seem great for beginners. Uh, they're quite strong. They are not that complicated to operate. And then you have multiple options for competitive players. Uh, so you can go stabas. You Now, one thing that I get into later on uh, with the variability of list is that while I think it's I give it six out of eight, it's largely a win. But as we've talked about in the show before, the sub-factions don't have enough incentive for combined arms lists, for mixed arms, for variety pack lists, which obviously I have a huge bias toward combined arms, variety pack list. Uh, you know, it's like, here's a sub-faction for squigs, here's a sub-faction for trogs. I, that could use a little bit more work. The lack of MPE, I ding them a little bit on points because of the issues that this battle tome had when it came out. I think it's undeniable that it had multiple issues. We've gotten better. It's less so now. So I kind of put it in the you know, seven range. Uh, there's still a few things that are annoying, like the Trog boss that will not die. If his artifact continues to operate with a four plus ward, he's got the vampire kind of healing. Just an absolute uh, nightmare sometimes to 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 work with. The the balance. Uh, I remember when I looked at this battle tome, thinking that this was a high mark, one of the high marks in my mind for viable uh, variety or variability in list. Or, you know, war scrolls. Sure. Just so many war scrolls that seem playable. Uh, spiders could use a little bit more support. Uh, yeah, so uh, really high. I, that was definitely the highest of the general play style that I'd given any of the factions that I looked at. There you go. Okay. Uh, very nice. And then competitive power level. You gave quality of rules a 14 out of 15, performance a 7 out of 10, and healthy position a 9 out of 10. Okay? Cool. Take us through yeah. that. Yeah. I could see the quality of rules maybe being a little lower. Uh, that's one where I'm not a good person to make an assessment because I've literally never played Gits. Uh, but trying to quickly think through them, particularly in relation to this new GHB, they do have a number of Locus options, Antorian Locus. Uh, they've got a number of units that can get hit by Horfrost. Yeah, as usual, you may be having a hard time casting that spell in this meta, but... Uh, if you can get it off, you've got a number of, of nice options there. And then, of course, they have the now increasingly classic teleport in the hero phase and try to cast Merciless Blizzard onto some unfortunate soul sure. uh, with Hand of Gork and, and Merciless Blizzard. Uh, it generally just strikes me as an army that has, you know, I kind of understood, Giannis, you were going for quality of rules in general and then in relation to GH this current season, right? And so when I, again, I think about the quality of the competitive roles. They needed to get dinged a little bit. I'm sure there are some Gits players out there that would say they've been dinged too hard with the point increases or the rules changes. Uh, the performance supports that they have gone down a little bit. We're still obviously early into the season. The current win rate on Warhammer with like 30, only 35 or so games is 47%. It's not a lot of games. You know, it's take that with a grain of salt. They were at 52% with a lot of data or pretty good amount of data last season, uh, which is right around where you'd want them. So I think they're one to watch where I could see them falling further, potentially, uh, hopefully not. Uh, in general, I think they're exactly where they should be. They're reasonably close to the ideal as far as an overall healthy position. Uh, yeah, they like some of the newer books are outperforming them. Uh, Soul Blight, OBR, probably Seraphon Starborn, uh, corn is is really difficult. So, but yeah, I think overall they're in a pretty good place. Cool. Verisimilitude. All right. Uh, what I learned filling this out, by the way, was that this section is the most important to me mm. because most of the armies that I play personally scored really high on these kinds of categories. Like this is clearly the reason I pick armies. This feel, mm. this look, this characteristics. This is the thing that gets me. Um, mm -hmm. in the end, the performance and stuff just didn't matter. A lot of my armies were all over the place on that, but most of my armies scored very high in the verisimilitude category that like I personally play. We'll see when we get to my results. But mm -hmm. here you had realism, five out of five, uh, characteristics, five out of five, feel of the model range, four out of five, feel of play, nine out of 10, uh, model range, five out of five, and then the psychographic profile, nine out of 10. So very high scoring category for them. And I, I, I honestly tend to agree with most of that, but I'll let you unpack that. Uh, yeah, that, I felt really strongly about about all of this. The, I mean, the realism. <laughs> so, uh, you, well, yeah, I, I, I don't want to get into it. 
uh, you, you've got you've got reason like that involve let's say religion uh, with sure. with the nature of this army. So without you know one can can take that as one wants. Uh, the characteristics so easy. I mean the bad moon spoke to me. Bad moon rising. That song goes through my head every time I think about this army. Uh, the uh, Squigs Gone Wild is the greatest uh, name that I think they've ever come up with for a ability. So that's <laughs> it's very memorable. Uh, you know, Gorka Morka, that whole thing. So yeah, it's like I, I can readily think about all kinds of things when I think about this army. Uh, Feel the model range, just brilliant. Uh, the only thing that stands out to me is some of the spider kits look a little outdated. The the main core spider's not too bad, like not too bad, but certainly could use some love, I think. But overall, obviously they've gotten a lot of love in recent years. Uh, really amazing range. Uh, feel of play again. This is based mostly on my feeling from other gets players. Is that I I do recall reading a lot of love when this battle tome came out. Like finally, finally they they nailed this battle tome. They, you know, right. it feels right. A lot of diversity. Uh, yeah, these these different different options. Again, would have liked to see a little bit more combined arms. Uh, the model range, so uh, Mason added here, Mason Knox, one of the people who's been filling some of this out. Tiny models can be a noxious to paint, does have many 25 million basis models uh, that, that have to go into hordes. So I think, yeah, he, he recommended docking this a little bit. I, I didn't dock it at all. Uh, but so, yeah, that's a fair point. Psychographic profile, again, kind of on the other comment, uh, feels based on other people, it seems like it's scoring pretty highly. Uh, would have liked to see a little bit more on the the Johnny uh, variety pack direction, and yeah. Uh, one last thing, uh, Mason also had a comment on the, the MPE. He had mentioned that high wound density getting bonus on herd fleeing is annoying to face. Some buffs combos can feel too good to be true. So yeah, I don't know. Where do you, where do you guys or maybe Vince start with you? Do you think seven is too high on MPE for gets? No, nope, I think that's or exactly is that... right. Okay, yeah, all right. Exactly so I was trying right to dodge them a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it right. feels exactly right to me. Yeah. And then other aspects. Other aspects. Cost to collection out of a five out of eight. Um, I agree. There have been many box sets which can help, but if you really want to fill out this army, it can it can be pretty expensive, right? Because it's one of those big forces, yeah. three different full sort of build outs in it. If you're going to collect enough trolls to field an army and enough squigs to field an army and enough goblins to field an army, right? You're effectively buying three different armies. So it's like, did you really want to buy? <laughs> yeah, like if you really want the full variability, you're sort of buying 6,000 points of an army to play 2,000 points, right? And, yeah. And so that can be a bit challenging. So I, I agree with that. You don't have to do that, but you oftentimes feel right. compelled to do that or or, or, or something. Um, ease of collection, right. uh, five out of six, because it's an army that does take well to very quick paint jobs. Totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. A lot of this army is very fast to paint. I think back to um, Goob's introductory video that first blew up when he painted like a hundred little goblins in a sitting on the sticks. You know, that's mm -hmm. there you go. It was like that's yeah. that's the whole story right there, right? Here's here's speed paint, hundred goblins, boom, bang, you're ready to go, and they look great right. on the table because you don't need to spend a lot of time on each individual little guy, right? They look awesome when they're in a big horde. So, and then variety yeah. of painting opportunities. I agree. I mean, you see everything from these guys. From beginner painters having fun with them to Richard Gray taking them to Golden Demon, right? Uh, so right. like it, it runs the full gamut. Yeah. 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 Maybe it could have gone one lower on the cost of collection. Maybe five out of eight is a little high because yeah, if you do as you said, if you really want to lean into the variety, it's going to get expensive. And so yeah, I, I think you could argue you know taking a few points off here and there. I ended up with 131 out of 150. Like I said, go ahead and jump. I mean that is my highest. By a fair amount, actually. Uh, so I was a little surprised by that. Apparently, I love Gits and uh, need to pick up a Gits army at some point. Uh, really? But yeah, huge fan. <laughs> huge well, fan yeah. of, this, of this book. 131 yeah. is a massive score. Let me just say that. Like, that is... Really? Yeah. That's big. Um, from I'm wherever surprised. That, I, yeah, that's, that's pretty great. All right. Let's see what else we got here. We got lots of other people who rated. Um, so, you know, we've got... we we. Tyler shared this out with some of his local group. Um, let's just take a we'll, we'll just take a look at these rather relatively quickly um, because we're not the people yep. who filled them out, so I can't get we can't give their thinking or anything like that. So actually, let me start back here. We'll do Alec Alex B, um, who had the uh, hide that column. There we go. Should have hit all these columns beforehand. I should have thought of that. Um, he did it for mm -hmm. FEC mm -hmm. and. 
lots of lots of interesting results here with the rules complexity being eight out of 13 uh, and so little, little to offer as far as units uh, balance eight out of ten lack of NP seven out of ten variability of list five out of eight internal power five out of eight psychographic profile three out of six it's a pretty timmy army not complex toolboxy enough to, to hit the other ones tend to agree with that 36 out of 55 uh quality of rules it is strong in the current season 14 out of 15 mm. performance 8 out of 10 and healthy position 7 out of 10 i would tend to agree with that i think this is actually an army that given its current set of rules it might be overperforming slightly i might get docked a little yeah. bit that, but but um but i think we'll see some of the, the sort of looney tunes stuff brought in to it's to, in the it's sorry dude it's in that jank zone right that we've had it is in the jank over the zone. Years. yes yes old rule old rule new rules combinations equals jank yeah yeah so i'm i'm sure that'll all get corrected uh realism five out of five characteristics three out of five which is and i get this this is an art like the characteristics mm. thing makes sense to me because this is one of the like docking them on this because part of the problem with fec is there these it's supposed to be like they all have this grand delusion that like literally mm -hmm. the grand delusion should be the easiest characteristic to grab onto and say that's the mm -hmm. thing right the problem is is that that's not how the army actually looks because it was cobbled together out of old models <laughs> sure right so it's like yeah. oh these are the guys riding horses and it's like are they really mm -hmm. it's just a big dude <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. So it, it is actually like there's a, there's a bit of a disconnect there. It's the coolest concept of an army, but because we just implemented it out of out of a bunch of existing models that we tried to shove in and tell a new story around, it doesn't really work. If this got completely yeah. redesigned from the ground up around that delusion, as we've seen a lot of the like Underworlds kits and stuff get designed, it works a lot better where they have like bone scepters and and rusted you know sort of like banged up crowns and things like this where there's like there's accoutrement that sells the grand illusion right they're they're not just completely mm -hmm. off their rocker that like this one big guy thinks he's a guy a little guy on a horse and it's like <laughs> but why though okay. sure i okay. definitely disagree with that bill i cannot disagree with that enough uh okay like I saw those new sculpts and and no, no, no. But if you like them, I'm happy for you to each their own. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Jan. Go ahead, Jan. That's, that's, my, uh, that's my biggest problem with them as well. So uh, I my first army was Bretonia, and I am ang I'm, I'm excited to to field them at some point in the future. Sure. I do like the idea. So to say, okay, those are just ghouls that are that think they are noble houses. And they ride on horses, uh, but it does not feel like this. And the the models right. they have, they are just not doing it for me because they are missing this. I would call it, I don't know if this is the correct word, regalia. This this pump. Yep. This, Something this, that signifies the delusion being made a little real. Whereas when you look at, like I said, all the new guys that they've sculpted since all have this, mm -hmm. right? They all give them some little signifier, some little pieces of regalia or whatever that are like that feed the delusion, right? Like they think it's a beautiful golden goblet, but actually it's a skull that they drink blood out of. Cool. Okay. Got it. I'm on board, right? Like, yeah, I get that. You know what I mean? There, like there's, there's something there. Like when they have something to quote, hang on to, I have something to hang on to. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, then the feel of the model range out of three out of five, uh, the feel of play out of seven out of 10, the model range at a two out of five. Yeah, boy, do I agree with that one. Uh, and then the psychic perfect profile at a ten out of ten. Like, yeah, I mean, it does, it does play like what it is. It's a pretty Timmy army. It plays in a pretty Timmy way. So I'm, I'm in for that. that that's good. Um, cost to collection. Oh, absolutely. This is one of the most efficient, effective. Like eight out of eight max score there. Um, ease yeah. of collection. Uh, some of the I agree with them like four out of six most of this takes contrast well and can be speed painted if you're doing a lot of the big beasties they can be pretty painful to both put together and paint because they are yeah. kind of crazy models uh variety three out of three and then painting opportunities one out of three like yeah that's that all that all checks out to me still coming in for mm -hmm. that big score 
uh, of a 111 out of 150. Not bad at mm. all. Better than a lot of things I rated. So it's still a very strong score for FEC here. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I don't, yeah, don't have a good enough feel for the army. Yeah. Do you have any real thoughts? Giannis, does that, do you have any feel for how that score seems to you? Um, I'd like, like a, a quick I, glance. What I like here is that it's not that high because I think sometimes we mm. uh, are too biased. And uh, what I did, I, um, so you don't know that, but I'm a teacher. And that's how this uh. all came together. And I made a great mm. sheet. So um, I took the 150 points. I said everything past 75 points is just a fail because then something needs to be is wrong. And I distributed the other points equally. And this would be then in the area of a C. So 95 mm -hmm. to 115 points. And I think that fits maybe. So there is there, mm. there are good bones. I like the, the ideas behind it. But there's still this, there's something missing for it to be better. I don't know if this makes sense. Oh, could you give the full? No, that's great. Could you give the full range? I'm curious. I, that actually would help. Certainly, yeah, me what's, and maybe some others. What's an A? What's a B? Yeah. What's a C? What's a D? <laughs> no. What's a fail? Yeah. So I started with uh, the fail would be zero to seventy four points. Um, okay. Then mm. uh, seventy five to ninety four. Then ninety uh, ninety yeah, ninety five to one hundred sixteen. One hundred seventeen to one hundred thirty eight would be a B. And 139 to 150 would be the A. Um, mm. I did not expect, or I do not expect there to be A-level armies because I think there are much, uh, there are far too many moving parts inside mm -hmm. there to really make something perfect. But mm. I would also be interested in what the chat is going to think about this. So maybe they can rate their armies and their guesses as well um, so that we can in the end see who's going to win. Absolutely. Yeah, we I will I will take a version of this spreadsheet so that people can score their own armies at home and uh, and share it out after the show. Um, I'll link that down in the show notes. I just need to basically make a sort of blank version of this so that and put it in a Dropbox location so people can can go grab it for themselves. So I'll link that. I'll also tweet it out so you can in my Twitter's right up there um, or whatever it's called now. I don't know uh, mm. whatever that thing is. Um, so. Uh, let's take a look at some more. Let, let's let's go quick. Uh, let's just let's just take a look at some scores. I want to keep moving. Here we go because we got a lot of people who want to see some scores. Tyler, coming back to mm. you, buddy. Let's talk about IJ Iron okay. Jaws. We're not talking about the whole army. <laughs> We're talking about J the whole book. We're talking about Iron Jaws. All right, hit me. Uh, you got a thirty-nine out of fifty-five total on the general play style. So. Little bit of a hit there, yeah. mostly in variability of lists. That took a big hit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 The I'll go quicker than last time. So rules complexity, I feel, you know, they're pretty strong. Great for beginners, some notable nuances for experienced players. We've talked a lot about that with Iron J Iron Jaws over the years. Uh, balance, seven out of ten, largely true, but pigs versus brutes is too obvious. Pigs, pigs, pigs is what we've been seeing. Pigs and cabbages, pigs and mall crushes. Uh, could use some refinement, I think, on the warbands to better differentiate them. There's like three different warbands. I don't know, whatever, like two or three different warbands. A little more uh, love. They were early on, so they're not getting the love that like the Warcry warbands are beginning of late in AOS. Uh, lack of MPE, yes, but can punish new players. So especially this is new players like, you know, are not yeah, that yeah. familiar with all the mobility tricks. They're not experienced with setting up a double turn against Iron Jaws. Not just a single turn, but a double turn against Iron Jaws, because you've said it many times, right? How many games can you win with Iron Jaws where you catch that round two and round three double, bottom two going in round three, and you just win the game out, outright right there? And so, yeah, that, that can be a little tricky to set up for. Yeah, very bit of list, huge problem in my mind throughout third edition. It's just mostly been pig spam. Uh, the internal power, most IJ lists stay away from allies. Sometimes you'll see Scry Kragnos or Scraga. Have you guys seen many IJ lists with allies? I really haven't, other than For, for those a while, two, it was pretty popular to take the little goblin boy in there, but uh, yeah. the little, the little goblin boy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but for the most part, it's been pretty stick to itself. Yeah. Uh, psychographic profile, this I'll probably say, should be... If you really want to yeah. branch out, you just run Big Wall. Like, everybody who wants Absolutely. to branch out just runs Big Wall. So. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, which could 
apply here, like because I am such a Johnny, like obviously I want more Johnny uh, in Iron Jaws, which means maybe I should be looking at Big Wall. So they may not be, but you know, five out of six on that. And then here, I'll just keep it going. Competitive power level, quality of rules. So eight out of 15, I thought it's getting a little long in the tooth relative to newer books. Still appreciate their simplicity. Uh, feeling in the moment here, maybe that is, that's probably too harsh, actually. That's probably way too harsh uh, on Iron Jaws. I mean, like, if you focus on just Iron Jaws and what they were designed to do, they should be doing, maybe that should be 12 out of 15. Uh, Vince, that's probably you too low, right? You want to split the difference to a 10 there, Tyler? Let's do a 10. Yeah, I think that's definitely too low. Okay. Like, they're not necessarily doing a whole lot of getting a whole lot of benefit in this current season but yeah uh let's see performance they've been bottom feeders for a while now uh again it's often pigs or bust i've played games with art boys and brutes they're off right now in today's game uh you're not going to be getting hand of gorkoff even you're going to get hand of gorkoff even less arguably this season and it was already previously not necessarily that reliable as a way to have some mobility on your four inch move Units, yeah, you've got uh, Mighty Destroyers to double move, but it just it's a completely different feeling trying to play Iron Jaws with a, with our boys and brutes than it is Pigs and Maw Crusher. You just don't have the mobility to compete meaningfully. It's it, it's really awkward. Uh, so yeah, it's very I think very much hard mode, one of the defining hard modes in the game right now, one of the lowest win rates. Play rate has really dropped, I think, for a lot of understandable reasons. And then uh, versatility, incredibly high, thirty-four out of forty. Like, yeah, this embodies raw destruction. Oh, this is, yeah, I mean, like, this is where there's there. This is where the army's succeeding. This is right in the Yeah, one hundred percent. So a little dings on again, like the feel of play. Our boys and brutes just are off. Sure. Like that's a discussion on why are they off, but but they're just off. The um, our boys are getting long in the tooth as well with their models. Like, of old models, they hold up a little bit better than your average old model, but still a little rough. And then other aspects, 17 out of 20, cost of collection. As far as I know, pretty solid. You don't have to have a ton of models. Right. Uh, you've, yeah. they've, they've been around for a long time. Yeah. They've had lots uh, of good deals. Of, They're very available secondhand. There's been lots of big boxes with great discounts and good builds in them. Yeah. Absolutely. Ease of collection is there. Variety... Not, it, but again, it's like, are you docking them unreasonably? Because part of their selling point is that they don't like they're not designed to have a lot of variety. That's the nature of the army. So maybe I should have put that at a two out of three. Uh, but you know, give us give us big pig. When when are we getting it? Maybe that'll go to a three out yeah, of three. Exactly. Once we get big pig, <laughs> that becomes a three out of three. It's that easy. Right. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, splitting the difference, we go up to a uh, a 106 out of 150, which was, you know, again, a lot of that is is as you mentioned, dude, getting hit on the competitive plat power level right now, sure. like yep. it's it's struggling hard, and then a little bit on the play style. So a solid C is where that came yeah. out of if memory serves. Is that right? Did I get it yeah. right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, solid C. Okay. Giannis, any any thoughts on on the Iron Jaws? How are you feeling about that score? Um, yeah, I've got a couple of thoughts. And uh, yesterday I uh, talked with Benny about them. And so I haven't played a ma I haven't played many games of Age of Sigma mm. in total. So I am a complete beginner. And I always play with Benny, and he's got Iron Jaws, and he loves them. I love them for many reasons because they look amazing. But I think um, what you said about the feel of play for the Art Boys and the Brutes, um, we mm. talked about you play Pigs and the uh, Maw Crusher. And you wouldn't take the brutes because they don't have this function. So they look like they mm -hmm. should be this um, anvil unit that you mm -hmm. would then flank into with the pigs, maybe. But mm -hmm. I don't think they do that. So I agree. Right. No, they, they fall over against most everything nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The same for the art boys. Somehow they just don't have a role. Even then letting them sit on objectives, you would rather take the art boy warband still, maybe uh, instead of them. And I think there you would have to change something, and that might be what you mean with they feel off, because I agree, or we agreed there yesterday as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Otherwise, a few things that we really liked about them, especially for the ease of collection and cost of collection, yep. um, mm. you can do a lot just by kit bashing them. You can take uh, yeah. second and 40k models. You can take, so what we did, we mm. started uh, playing orcs and goblins when we were. 15 
Uh, so we had boxes of them laying around and then you could build them as art boys or you can use the heads on other models that, that you can find. Um, and I think that's a big bonus for them as well. So maybe it's the same for the goblins, uh, but here even more because you've got this big, um, big, yeah, basket full of uh, 40k orcs that you can still use. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the beast snaggers, especially that came out recently, are also very, very directly droppable in this. Uh, absolutely. I don't know if you've seen them. There's a wonderful um, ogre army transformed into surfer orcs so they yeah. took the ogre belly the ogre body and then uh, the orc head amazing literally yeah uh nice. tom would be all about yeah. surfer surfer orcs from ogres all right let's talk about corn <laughs> this was mason right who filled this out yep. mason ox yep okay so rules complexity getting a 12 out of 13 it is a complex army but it has a lot of toolbox it plays well into most seasons it has a lot of anti-stuff Balance six out of ten, uh, so we got we do have some challenges there, right? Uh, for for obvious reasons, there are some just big whiffs in the book. Uh, lack of NPE, uh, six out of ten. Uh, I agree. This can sometimes feel like gotcha hammer. You get you know murder lusted at the wrong time or or something like that, right? Six might be a little lower than I would have scored him, but I get where he's coming from. Okay, I get where he's coming from. This is a, this is a corn player, correct? I uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not saying I didn't say anything. I'm I'm no, tired of getting like, in trouble with corn players. I haven't said anything. Vince said everything just there. Corn players, leave me alone. That's right. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, Mason's in the chat. All right, Mason. If I say anything wrong, no, no, you're good, buddy. If I say anything wrong to your opinion, feel free to drop in the chat in the comments there in, in the chat and, and correct me. But like, I I think your 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 scores all make sense to me. Variability of lists. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not quite where we'd want it to be, especially because of some of the units not having the viability we would want. Um, the I, I, Personally, I don't agree with that. I would personally okay. put that at like a six out of eight. I, I do feel like I'm seeing a decent amount of variety. Certainly not like that's that's half off. Yeah, I would put that at a six. Like, you know, that. you like when I see, I mean, I'm, Constantinos is Constantinos. He's an amazing corn player. He's been playing the army forever. He's a great list writer, but I, I like uh get you know get uh get some good feels going whenever i see a constantino's corn list because the man's sure. writing these beautiful highlander you know separate all like 12 different war scrolls vincent it's just it's a thing of beauty I, all right I, look i understand uh <laughs> internal power seven out of eight oh, needs almost no support really likes to be mono corn you knock a point off because maybe sometimes people uh uh just commit heresy and take some kind of uh, caster that they can sneak in, like a Bellacor or something. And then sure. psychographic profile, four out of six. Uh, you know, it, it, I agree. They're not all, it, it's all possible, but not great. So, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, competitive power level, quality of the rules, 10 out of 15. Uh, performance, eight out of 10. And healthy position, seven out of 10. Okay. Uh, then we yeah, oh, personally I would I would I would go a little higher on the quality of rules, including just overall the quality of rules and and this season. I think they're oh they Mason was a hard judge pretty... here. He's a rough scorer. Uh, <laughs> He's not soft feel, like feel the rest of us. This, this season, no, it's great. Mason's down here using decimal points. Oh my goodness, what is uh, this sure. noise? <laughs> He's getting into the half points. Couldn't couldn't decide between two and a three. So, uh, realism four out of five. Uh, characteristics three out of five. See, I I think that's what have been when I'd score him a five out of five for. Mm. Uh, I think Corn has one of the best characteristics in the whole thing. So so Mason, this is the point I'm gonna draw. Like literally, people <laughs> shouting "Blood for the Blood God, Skulls for the Throne of Corn." It's like the most mm. th other than just shouting "Wah." It is the the most like used Warhammer phrase, right? Like it it is yeah. part and parcel of how we think about this game. It's in literally the DNA of warhammer and the you know it fits so i i that's that's what i'd say um and then so i i would have scored him higher than that i would have gone the full five out of five personal take uh feel of the model range two and a half this guy uh feel of play six out of ten model range four out of five and psychographic profile six uh out of ten 
he said I'd expect them to feel very spike like and they feel very unspike. I totally get that. They are they do still remain quite a Johnny army actually despite changing. If anything now they're quite Johnny Timmy as a matter of fact. Um rather yeah. than yeah. Not leading much into into uh spike right. at all. If, yeah, if you had a, a Johnny biased corn player filling this out, they're going to on the versatility it's going to be a lot higher than what he was given. But it's understandable why he scored it the way that did through that lens as you've commented on many many times about yeah the lack of of kind of spikiness or or sorry timminess of the yeah, of the yeah. army absolutely yeah i mean i've got a friend who's a pretty timmyish player and has a great time with his corn now in the new book like really loves it right um mm. loves his bloodthirsters and you know just taking some, some cool units of like skull crushers or big blood warrior blocks and stuff like that and feels pretty good about it right like it's he's like yeah i like how this plays you know it's, it's mm. so there you go um, and then cost of collection, you know, seven out of eight. Totally agree with that. Corn again being a very affordable army. Um, ease of collection, mm -hmm. five out of six. Uh, some of the models in here are quite annoying to paint, like Blood Warriors. But there's a lot of easy paints in this that are very friendly to new people. The Blood Reavers, uh, your uh, most of your demons, just basically any of the demons are like really fast and easy and fun to paint, yeah. that kind of thing. And then variety, two out of three, and painting opportunities, three out of three. Yep. Okay. So for a total of a hundred and nine and a half, can't forget that half, <laughs> out of fifty. Uh for a solid C score. Alright, how do we all feel so about that one? That that felt low to me. I, I would have bumped this one up probably at least plus ten. Mm -hmm. I I really like, I mean, despite uh, my whinging over the the months about the nature of a certain mechanic in this battle tome that that did get hit. Uh, I love this book for the most part, which you know it, it fits into my biases, uh, Johnny biases. Uh, so yeah, personally, I would have given this uh, maybe plus ten, maybe around one hundred twenty. For sure. Uh, I think here you might have the problem that we talked about, where this might be a good book in its own. Mm -hmm there because there's something missing maybe for psychographic profiles uh, mm -hmm. that there are parts missing that it just is not there to fulfill um so it is good in itself but not that big of a uh, not there's not this big of a variety maybe mm -hmm. yeah. okay very good uh and mason said i love the army i don't think the scoring reflects that as much mason you're a tough scorer you're a tough you're a tough grader <laughs> and i respect it i respect it sir no. Okay, we've got some other corn scores, I'm sure, somewhere. Okay, so let's uh, let's see. We got a lot to choose from. Let's take a look at uh, David. So this is David C. This is another one of your people, right uh, there, Tyler? Uh, yeah, David Costa with Hammer of War, Bad Reports, Par Excellence. Now Excellence. here we're doing LRL, just in in expedited. I'm gonna jump because I want to make sure we touch on a lot of armies. Uh, yeah. On the general play style, a 41 out of 55, and we'll look at, you know, this kind of kind of just took some little hits throughout on LRL, mm. on Lumineth Realm Lord. So no no big sections where there was really, like, a lot missing, right? It's just all, it's all off, right? Mm -hmm. um, quality of rules, 32 out of 35. Mm. That's tough. I'm not sure I'd agree with that, honestly, in the current season. I think they've been sliding down. Um, but... But we'll see. That's a that's a that's a real belief in LRL's current power that I don't have. I'm not sure the stats would bear that out. Um, though I do well, think if I, if I can... in the hands of a good player, they're very strong. Go for it. Yeah, but if, while I'm thinking about it, because I'll forget it, uh, Giannis, on all of this. So when I was thinking about LRL, it stood out to me, right? Right. We've got rules complexity under general play style, then we've got quality of rules under this notion of competitive power level. Uh, I, I guess rule, what I'm thinking about is intended to be covered in rules complexity but at least at the time in my mind it felt eh, maybe it is i'm just thinking about right like the complexity uh, all of these issues challenges with no i guess you're as i'm thinking about it it does it is covered pretty well in rules complexity i suppose i just think that he probably scored them a little too high for my taste 10 out of 13 because yeah it's very difficult for a beginner i think to, to play this army even for more you know relatively experienced players Oh, I agree. Um, I, I just said a, I just basically said a bunch of nothing there because I'm realizing that yeah, rules complexity does probably cover what I was feeling. So apologies for that. Um, so mm -hmm. when I read this, I so I haven't played them, I haven't played against them, but just what I caught from your shows, um, 
it sounded to me as a beginner like it would be too much for me. So yeah. I think here you would need to take out, at least in my opinion, but I haven't tried it and beginner. It sounds like there's too much synergy. I think uh, I would then just go online, download a list and use that. And even then mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I could um, pull that off uh, because you mix magic and shooting and um, you have to understand what a castle is. I That took me quite a while and, uh, until I understood <laughs> this formation sure. and maybe how to do something against it and so on. Um, so I felt that this might be too much for me personally. Mm -hmm. okay. For Similitude, scoring up to a 37 out of 40. Not missing many points there. Just a couple on the psychographic mm -hmm. profile. And then other aspects. Took a little bit of dock on the cost of collection. I would have knocked that down a little more. Some of this, this army is pretty expensive. Uh, yeah. Ease of collection, variety and painting opportunities. Gets us to a total of 110 points. Okay. So, uh, that's where we that's where we end up at. Still a solid C, right in line with everything else there, right in line with, with uh, the past two we've looked at. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I probably would have docked it a little more points, personally, including oh, the, yeah, the other we'll aspects. Oh, don't worry, we'll have a chance to look at that later when yeah. I score them. <laughs> Known right, LRL hater. <laughs> sure. Uh, what yeah, you're going to forget yeah. is that if you want to go into this area of a B, I think it's important that you are in the fat middle of... Uh, balance as well so that it's not going mm. to be the most powerful army that is in the in the top categories i think sure. it's those who have who offer the most and who have an internal balance that works i think we will yeah. see a of them later i agree mm. all right let's take a look here at some night haunt uh so again let me go ahead and hide this there we go all right so Night Hunt scoring a 34 out of 55 on uh, the uh, total points here uh, for a general play style. Taking the biggest hit on rules, complexity, and balance. Both of those track to me. Uh, and then competitive power level, 21 out of 35, taking a massive hit on the quality of rules. Uh, you know, like, yep. <laughs> I, it's mm. it's rough. It's rough to be a ghosty boy in the current season. Let's not let's not kid ourselves. Right? These unless guys are not you're performing. A, unless you're a Knight Trincinelli. Apparently. Sure. Again, that's that's because it's, uh, you know, like, uh, maybe that's that's like, if you're that that's that's because you're Nate, not because it's Night Haunt. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Uh, all right, for similitude, scoring very high on, and that I completely agree with. This is another yeah. one of those armies that is an absolute home run on the verisimilitude. The like, it, even playing against them can often feel like you're you're caught in a uh, in a myriad uh, experience of, of different emotions of grief and sadness and loss. Yeah. Uh, and so. <laughs> You know, but but just like the way these models are and their story behind them and the grab them and all this stuff, like it's just yeah, it's it's really mm -hmm. dead on. They did such a fantastic job with this, so I, I very much enjoy, I appreciate that score. I um, uh, very, sorry, uh, I very much enjoyed the uh, description of the characteristics. There were so I've painted last year, I've painted something like 139 night horns, so all of those that I had. Um, and uh, I did not notice this, this then, but he describes them as uh, prisoners. And then you can see all of the elements in the uh, models as well, especially for the chain rafts who all have those chains. And yep. um, I really enjoyed mm. the descriptions there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the chains we wear were forged in life, Scrooge. Okay, so... Uh, mm -hmm. And then finally, cost of collection, 7 out of 8, easy collection, 4 out of 6, variety, 2 out of 3, and painting opportunities, 3 out of 3. Again, that's another one of those things that's actually great for new painters um, to, who can make yeah. it look great. But you also see, <laughs> I, I keep using the example, but he keeps taking him to Golden Demon. You see Richard Gray taking a night haunt <laughs> to Golden Demon. So, you know, there you go. Uh, ending mm -hmm. for a total score of 110 out of 150, basically in the same place as, like, again, we're right Right in that, that C yeah. zone, right about where Iron Jaws was, right about where Corn was, just hitting in that mm -hmm. spot. Okay. 
That feels about right to me personally. Yeah. Sure. Thanks to Alex Bellinger for this one in the Flesher Courts. Yeah, with yeah. Appreciate it, Alex. Very nice. Now let's do a fun back to back. All right, everybody. Is everybody mm. ready for a quick back to back comparison? <laughs> so we can see how two different people view the army. Because again, none no one of these is meant to be objective, right? It's about it's about everybody mm. doing this individually and the truth that, that brings. So Nurgle. This is from Mason. All right. So uh, we're just going to, I'm just going to scroll this all the way down. Mason scoring up Nurgle at 122 mm. out of 150. Uh, sco moving firmly into the B territory. Okay. 46 out of 55 uh, in the general play style with some, uh, with some really good explanations there of why. Uh, the competitive power level, 25 out of 35. Not sure I agree with that. Nurgle's been on a downward slide, and I think it will continue to be unless helped. Um, but still, it can have some... some. In it certainly makes for interesting games. Versimilitude, 36 out of 40. Extremely strong. Again, completely agree on that. Uh, and then cost of... Uh, sorry, the other aspects, so like cost and the painting opportunities... Very, very, very high scorer in this category, and yet again, I agree. Uh, in fact, I would have put the uh, the the uh, cost of collection up at probably a six out of eight, just because a lot of these models have been mm -hmm. around for a while, and you can get them secondhand pretty easy. Yeah. Although there are some of the elite kits that are expensive, and I do agree with that too. Mm. Uh, so, but I, I would have gone six out of eight. But this is minor quibbling. This puts it into the B range. So before we talk about it, that's that's Mason's score. Okay, so Mason had 122. Now, now let's talk about known Nurgle lover Tyler <laughs> and his scoring right next. Boom. Let's hide this description down here. There we go. Tyler with a total score of 124. Even more positive than Mason, also firmly in the B category. You were uh, you were a little bit uh, so you kind of we look at the differences here. You were a little bit mm. lower in the play style, right? Uh, about the yeah. same place in competitive power level, but then you were much higher in the other aspects and a tiny bit higher in the verisimilitude. You came out to about the same place, irrelevantly different. 124 versus 122. Again, when we're in these like one or two point differences, there really isn't anything that can be said there, other than we've got yeah. some. We've got some consistency. We got multiple parties all saying that uh, that this is a firm B army. Okay. Yeah. What do you guys think? I I, I tend to agree. I think when you look at this army holistically, the only real mm -hmm. short spot of this, honestly, is in the current season performance, which has been on like a downward sure. trend because the meta is moving away from being able to want to play these five round attrition games right there's a lot more model restore a lot more model regeneration things like that and those kinds of things really hurt nurgle yeah. there's a lot more slice and dice through wards and treat them like they don't exist which really hurts nurgle right all of that stuff chips away at their win rate and their their viability in the current season but like on every other thing here yeah mm -hmm. like i'm in right and that's that's sort of a fluke of the current time as much as it is anything. That's also, that's also we should state that the competitive power level, the interesting thing about that one, is it's also the most mobile, right? Like one battle scroll published tomorrow could change your perception of the competitive power level of it, right? Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, Jonas, what do you think with Nurgle? Um, I, I think I have to agree. So uh, it's a bit yeah. like with, uh, with Santa Fe Amad. So if they... Just uh, if you just can't play them for a season, um, yeah, you will just it will they will be irrelevant for the um, uh, evaluation. Um, so mm. you would have to always have to check in and see uh, how they might have changed. Uh, I love Nurgle. I really like the models. I think so. I don't remember uh, hundred percent what they changed, but they had this. Um, then they have something like a wheel. Uh, this mechanic, yep. yeah, the wheel cycle. Yeah. I think I really like that. Um, and yeah. I think <laughs> the, especially on the very similitude level, um, that's how you should do it. And then yeah. the rest mm -hmm. will change. That's fine. Um, yep. Yeah, so 
I think they might be on my list of armies at some point as well. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and yeah. Very friendly. I didn't say it, but very friendly to new painters and high level painters alike. Again, this is one of those yeah. things that you see in you see Nurgle models in Golden Demon and taking best in category and best in show and all that stuff all the time. Constantly. Mm -hmm. Constantly, I, constantly, constantly. I, I remember yeah. Sam Lances, didn't he uh, paint a big and clean yep. one? Big and clean one, one of those. Uh, sure did. Amazing. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, we have been seeing a small number of people get some results early on here. The play sure. rate is down. Uh, Raymond Lane comes to mind. He took a 5-0 with a bunch of Rottmeyer Creed, two play claws. That's cheating, Raymond. Uh, not allowed. You should not have rats in Nurgle list. I don't care if they have the Nurgle keyword. And then he had. It was a. It was a fascinating list. But so yeah, you have some options that you can lean into. Uh, for my personal taste, they often involve doing things that I don't particularly like to do. Uh, but that's that's fine. We're all different butterflies. Sure. Uh, by the way, obviously play clause went down in points. This is adjacent to what we're talking about. But I started. I yeah. played a game with. I started try. I tried out a couple play clause. You know what? Didn't hate them. Didn't hate them. They did. They did all right. They're pretty interesting right now. So, yeah. We, we might have finally <laughs> found the points where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, yeah. I might be a buyer now. That's for a different show. All right. Let's do another back to back compare, shall we? Let's talk about Alex and Mason, who both did Soul Blight Gravelords. SBG, mm. the terror of the current season. Let's take a look <laughs> here. Uh, so, here we've got a 45 out of 55 on general playstyle. 26 out of 35 on competitive power level. This is from Alex, by the way. 35 out of 40. And a 13 out of 20 on the other aspects for a total score of 119, which I believe is like the bottom of B, right? That sets us in kind of right at the bottom of B. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Let me tell you what's wrong here, though. Quality of rules, 12 out of 15. Uh, sure. Sure. But like performance, 10 out of 10. No, this is an army that goes around the other side and gets docked. It's an overperformer. Right? Sure. It's too strong. All right. Well, yeah, I, I, I guess it's obviously it's not necessarily, I, I didn't find it necessarily clear in the way that we were doing this, that that is what you should have concluded and how you would score. Sure. It's you know tough. I mean. Like, I don't think the 10 out of 10, the best possible score is like if an army had an 80% win rate, that would be out of bounds, right? Like not that this does. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, that would mean your performance is, is like, it's, that's not a good performance. That's bad. Right, good performance is you're in the middle of the 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 the. Uh, I think, for what it's worth, man, I, to me at least, Giannis correct, but uh, that's why you have healthy position. What Vince is talking about goes in healthy position. Performance is a pure assessment, for better or worse, of performance. If it so happens that they're killing, you know, they're destroying the world. Okay, it's going to be a ten out of ten. And then healthy position, you got to dock them because they're destroying the world. That's fair, and he did give him a four out of ten there. To be to be fair, so yeah, okay, I could I, I could see that. I when I was thinking about it, I was kind of thinking about performance as like it, it does it win games, yes, but like there's a point where that becomes bad was sort of what was in my head, right? But I, you're right, I might be layering that on there. So good clarification, good clarification. Okay, um, this might also be connected a bit to the quality of rules because only because you win a rule is not necessarily good. So you could mm. maybe move it around a bit, but I think it would come out uh, come out the same in the end mm. cool uh but overall a very strong score uh for soul blight here from alex and i mean obviously it is a great army again we haven't talked soul blight yet but um you know it's like it's a it's a very compelling army it has that classic undead hammer horror you know monster movie feel that that a lot of people like yeah. and resonates and all of that the models are very friendly to new players the army is very strong too strong, like straight up too strong right now. Uh, needs It needs like nerfed, just like it needs punched in the face hard uh, again. <laughs> it was not punched hard enough. Um, so punch it again. Um, but there you go. But at 119, now let's take a look at how Mason scored it. Mm. So let's take a look over here. So Mason going for the 49 out of 55 on the general play style. 30 out of 35. Didn't dock as hard on the healthy position. Uh, so so little not not quite as as sort of uh 
Not quite taking that same. Apparently, we're just we're just good with like the whatever insane win rate they have. Uh, and then 30 out of 40 on verisimilitude and 17 out of 20 on other aspects, but still ending at a pretty similar place. 126 uh, versus 119, still firmly in the B category space, uh, sort of the, the low mid range of B there, uh, mid to low. Uh, and so there we go. Not, not too bad. Again, pretty pretty close alignment overall, right? Some different feelings on some of the different areas, but coming to about the same place. There you go. Mm. Okay. Cool. Anything else you want to say about SBG, the Soul Blight Gravelords? Uh, you've lost the battle in the acronym, that's for sure, my friend. Uh, everybody is on SBGL. To, yeah, just trying to do this SBGL nonsense and this fourth <laughs> letter in for no reason. You will see that corrected on my she on my sheet. That's for sure. <laughs> they okay. uh, when I first started filling out the uh, forms uh, for myself, I thought about who do I think is going to win. So it, it, overall, who will have the most mm. points? And I think they were uh, one of those who I thought, okay, they might be the winners tonight, more or less, um, mm. because of the model range, because of how they have performed uh, so far in the last um, meta, I think they were quite quite good as well. Um, and even for cost of collection, um, there's still a few cursed cities around so that you can uh, at least start a bit. And um, yeah, and skeletons you will find more than you need. Um, so they were one of my, my, uh, my, my favorites so far. Okay. Yeah, I think if we get them a little more in bounds on the competitive power level, that would be true. I would agree with that. Yeah, I think it's obviously where they're at. They're still, as Vince said, a little high, starting with zombies, spam. And the there's some meaningful MPE as well that I think is appropriate to, to get docked on. Surprise, surprise. I'm uh, saying that. I've not. It's It can be brutal playing against Soulblight with some of the rules mechanics just that's the reality so yeah i think it's appropriate to to get some dock there yeah which both of these guys did yeah hit hit that pretty hard very good all right let's uh let's keep moving uh so next up let's take it let's take a quick journey into obr shall we we'll just we'll just take a look at the scoring here i'm curious as to mm -hmm. how they work out uh, so let's take a look at Alex's OBR rating. Uh, I'm going to have to get Brendan to fill this out for OBR as well. Uh, yeah. General play style, 38 mm -hmm. out of 55. So taking some strong hits there, especially in the lack of NPE. That was the big, big, big hit there. And I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, competitive. Let me tell you what. Alex, if you're watching... I like how you score, buddy. I like I like how Alex thinks. <laughs> I like Alex's scoring. He's, he's a good yeah. grader. Okay. He covered all the death, and he's he plays all of them. Hardcore death player, every faction. So, yeah, there pretty honest go. with all of this. Absolutely. Uh, yep, and then uh, taking that that hard hit on the on the healthy position, move two by six in Mortis Guard, <laughs> I dare you. I agree. That's a four <laughs> out of ten on a Mortis Guard alone. Uh, very high score on verisimilitude, which I would act, which I would tend to agree with. Um, I think that's right. Uh, and then other aspects, uh, the cost of collection being the main hit, but other than that, uh, scoring pretty decently, which I agree with that completely as well. Uh, for a total score of 115 out of 150, which I believe puts us at the very top of C, basically. It's like a C plus, right? I think that's right yep Quite very good points. okay so another army that could probably use uh some adjustments we'll say on the competitive power level um but overall yeah looks good yeah i i, I liked his dock of the internal internal balance is off the like the crawler not the, yeah the crawler you don't see a whole lot of you're not seeing as many more tech guard and particularly after the Understandable hit, but probably too hard of a hit on the what the what's up the, the Gothasar Harvester. The so yeah, the internal balance is just off. Uh, I like this point about it's just basically a pure spike book. 
at this point. Yep. Like it's yep. just all about raw efficiency, which okay, that's a little boring. Like uh, yeah, that's that's fine to be a little spike or a decent, you know, primary spike, but let's get let's get some love for the other options. So yeah, it it's really doing a bad job with that right now. Yeah, a bit of a mess, but but still, it, yeah, it was uh, really picking up a lot of points in the versimilitude and the other aspects, yep. as well as obviously the the competitiveness, quality of rules, performance. Okay, let's do another back to back. Let's talk about Slaves to Darkness. Tyler, yeah, we're going to start with go. you, then we'll check your work against against uh, Travis's rating. So here yep. we go. 41 out of 55 on the general play style, 24 out of 35 on the competitive power level. Uh, Verisimilitude got the 35 out of 40. And then the painting opportunities, 20 out of 20. Uh, very easy army to collect, to paint, to all that stuff, and, and just a heck of a lot of fun. For a total score of 120 mm -hmm. out of 150, basically falling right at the bottom of the B. Uh, so, but, but, but into that B level. Uh, I think I think I think you might have undercut him there. I think this is one of my highest rated armies when we look over at my scores, but I, I don't disagree. I think I end up in the same place as you, also as a B. So there you go. Yeah. Do you want to give thoughts now, or wait till you go through Travis? Let's do Travis. Okay. So then Travis. Uh, we'll hide this. Okay. Forty-three out of fifty-five on the general play style. Max score, Travis, on the competitive power level. Max. Score. Well, boy, oh boy, that, that feels not correct given their current situation and win rates. Uh, I don't think that is true at all, Travis. That, that no. 37 out of 40, and then other aspects, 20 out of 20. Travis, this is, this is, a, this is a guy who really loves Slaves to Darkness. 135. I think that actually slides it. He's, he's giving him an A, I believe. That's sliding him up into A territory. <laughs> that might be a bit strong. That might be a bit strong. Look, look, the man, he's my, I, I love him. He, he's riding incredibly high. He had his first 4-1 at Bug Eater GT with the abomination that is Bellacore and Archeon tag team. Mm -hmm. So his, his perspective is completely askew, right? You're just going to have to let it go. You're going to have to forgive him on that. Yes. He's not yes, yet come back down to earth. Somebody's got to get this guy back down in the, out of the stratosphere with that 35 <laughs> out of 35 on competitive. Holy Moses. Okay. Yeah. Very good. What else do we want to say about S2D? Okay, well, other than, out, than Trav being out of his mind, sure. Uh, just in general, but especially with the, his score on Slaves of Darkness here, the where did I dock them? I dock them on performance, so 44% rate so far. Not too bad, you know, a little outside of the fat middle. Uh, experienced players, good list, can punch up. You know, you're, you still see spike efficiency list, 2x6 Vanguard, 10 Chaos Knights, Knights of the Empty Throne, or name your different variations thereof that can perform reasonably well. Uh, the healthy position, yeah, it's it's a little rough. I mean, it's one of the more fair armies right now, which I think might heighten some of the disparity between your you know, quote-unquote average players versus quote-unquote ex whatever experience better, however you want to characterize the difference there in players. And so, yeah, 24 out of 35 for me on that. The... I. I thought, you know, looking back, dude, obviously we had a glowing review in general, I would say, yeah, with yeah. that original Beltome. I still think it's the... one of the best books they've written in 3.0. I stand behind that. It just there's 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 some internal balance issues, but that's because of the, the number of scrolls. Yeah, exactly. So and I guess maybe that's, that's feeling a little more pronounced. Because, yeah, I would have thought that when we reviewed that book, I thought we were going to see more variety in lists than we have ended up seeing. Now, to some degree, there is a potential that Slaves is like other armies, like Stormcast, where it just so happens the actual potential variety is higher than what, you, what we've seen sure. for the most part. So there's a little bit of that going on. But yeah, I, I do feel like Legion of the First Prince, again, obviously the Johnny Bias, I, there needs to be more Legion lists played. I, I think there is gas there that not enough people have, have explored. Uh, with this emphasis on spike efficiency. But in general, yeah, a little disappointed on that. Uh, so yeah, I was a little lower than I would have wanted to be because I, I think it is an amazing battle tone. Giannis, you got any thoughts on Slaves so I can shut up and stop rambling? <laughs> uh, yes, I do. Um, 
So mainly on the uh, painting and the verisimilitude mm -hmm. aspects, uh, those the slaves were one of those um, contenders for the uh, yeah for the best army in the end for me as well. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised by their performance a bit, um, mm. and I think that's where they uh, lose a few points. Um, but generally speaking, I think a lot of things go right here, basically. So mm -hmm. the verisimilitude, I really like. Um, I think it's uh, for a lot of players, they can um, find something in there, in the variety that they have. You've got the Chaos Warriors, you can go, I think you can add demons as well, and so on. Uh, you can... Mm. Um, what I really enjoyed, so I built one list for them that you could give this mark of uh, chaos to a unit. Uh, it was in 2.0 where you could, I think, say this unit is has the mark of chaos of corn. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100 sure. I did, I did like that. Um, in terms of uh, the other aspects, uh, I think they are quite expensive. Um, you will find quite a bit uh, on the secondary market here in Germany, but I think the bigger units and you might want to have um, a Balakor in there and you, he is expensive. Uh, and at least to me, in the ease of collection, uh, same for um, corn as well, I think painting mm. skin is difficult, at least to me still, um, mm. so that you are happy with it. And painting faces is difficult and they have those tiny eyes. Uh, and yeah. the same with trim. And I think they're... Um, a beginner painter can do it, but they would then. I usually try to. So when I started, I went for the box art, and uh, then I tried to paint this gold trim everywhere, and that is not that easy. Um, yeah, so you got some support in the chat for for that perspective. Yeah, so I could see maybe docking a little bit on that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's jump over here to Stormcast Eternals. We just talked about this army a great deal, Tyler. Let's see how you scored them out. So, 45 out of 55 on general play style, 20 out of 35 on competitive power level, 29 out of 40 on verisimilitude, and then 20 out of 20 on the other aspects. Certainly, this is one of the easier armies to collect, to paint, and that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> for a total score of 114 out of 150, firmly in the C category, upper area of that range. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. How's it feel to you? It feels right. Yeah, it feels right. You you hit them like you hit them hard on the performance and the healthy position, and that all feels correct. Same with the quality of rules. We know there's a big internal balance problem in the book, right? It's aged. Right. It it feels in there. It is on it like it's it's nominally higher scored than some of the army other armies we've talked about that have also come in at like 110, 111, and that feels a little off. But that being mm -hmm. said, it is a pretty great army in a lot of aspects when we when you look at it holistically. Um, so it, like it being in effectively the same range, right, of that middle sea territory I... feels feels very correct to me. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm scoring the variability of lists maybe higher than average if, if we were to do this, right? And as an aggregate, a lot of others, they might score a little bit lower because I do have this view that the on paper viable vari variability variety is higher than what we've observed with right. a lot of lists. And uh, yeah, the, but yeah, psychographic profiles all across the board, Timmy Dragons, Johnny Come My Arms, Synergistic Plays, Spike, you do have raw efficiency options which again, we see a lot of lists that are, how many hammers can I fit into a list? But then they don't have enough balance for getting battle tactics or holding objectives or blah, 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 or screens. The, yeah, quality of rules, lots of duds, as you said, uh, unfortunately, uh, but I, I do like that a lot of the rules are on the war scrolls. So I actually personally, we talked about that a little bit before events. I still love that about this battle tome compared to some of these others, because in my mind, it does make it a little more adaptable or readily adaptable across seasons where you, you do have so much that's just on the war scrolls themselves. But that's um, a Marmite take. Like, some people hate sure. that. I think I remember Rob early on talking about that, right? Like, there's a uh, Darren early on, Darren Watson early on, was talking about some of this, like, where where is the complexity? Like, all of this has been removed. It's all in the war scrolls now. There's not enough, yeah, outside of the war scrolls. We've gotten back to that a little I bit more. I think that's with some definitely not true anymore. Not true. Yeah, exactly. Which... To me, anyway, I, I always we I find that an interesting discussion because I think there's a case to support that original view of actually maybe we had it better than we realized early on with with uh, the nature yep. of that earlier <laughs> that earlier orientation. 
But yes. yeah, uh, only yes. lunatics yeah. like Darren Watson would have complained about it because <laughs> Darren wants a bunch of ridiculous nonsense because he's like the emblematic Johnny. By the way, I love totally. you, Darren. You're an amazing human being, and like he's truly, he's truly one of the best of us. He is. Uh, but like, Absolutely. what he likes, just he must understand his tastes are outside the norm of, of like, yeah. if there's a fat middle of tastes, he's outside of it. Okay, as yeah. far as that rules complexity goes. Okay. Yep. Let's let's go through a couple here pretty quick just to get some scores out for people. So Mason scoring out Seraphon, our first Seraphon scoring. Uh, 48 out of 55 on playstyle, 30 out of 35 on performance. Uh, 30, you know, one of the problems with rating Seraphon is what are you rating? Are you rating Starborn? Are you rating Coalesce? That's two <laughs> sure. very different experiences there when you talk about like performance and healthy position and quality of rules. Boy, is that going to yeah. be like, if I was scoring with Starborn in mind, I'd have a very different score set than if I scored with Coalesce in mind. Uh, yeah. So, verisimilitude, 30 out of 40. And then we got another Mason loves them dots. You love them. You love that 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 decimal point, Mason. Six, uh, six and a half on the cost of collection. Six and a half. Uh, for a total score of 124 and a half out of 50, firmly into the B territory, Ultimately, I think that feels pretty correct to me. Um, I think that I think Mason was a little bit hard or a little bit softer on competitive power level than I would have been. I would have mm-hmm. dumped him a little more on healthy position, uh, and then I think he was a little bit harder than I would have been on some of the verisimilitude stuff. Um, but again, I tend to think of it more through a coalesce lens, and so it's like it's yeah. tough to say there. Yeah, I think if you average it out, this book will come out as a C in that C range, as opposed to you, you take the average of Coalesced and, and Starborn, you'll get sure. to a C, I think. Yeah, if we like, if we force people to say, score this as though you're playing Coal, or, you know, as though it's the Coalesced side of the book, or score this yeah. as though it's the Starborn side of the book. Yeah. 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 So I think even with the uh, hits on Starborn and even setting aside the uh, through the battle scroll, and even setting aside the newfound love for lizards and incarnates. It's still uh, quite strong what you can do. Uh, you know, Starborn is quite good. And uh, Coalesced, yeah, is still struggling, I feel. Play, folks, play Croak Crawl in Coalesced. Run minimum 10 Soros Guard, 15 20. Croak right in the middle of them. Push him up the board, hang out in the middle of the battlefield. Think of him like a, a lizard go trick and just have a great time. Keep your Astralith Bear alive. I don't understand why more Coalesced players don't. I, think that's quite strong and because, i've barely because we seen want it. to play stompy stompy monsters tyler <laughs> that's we okay. didn't we didn't get into this coalesced game to run a dead frog and a bunch of saurus bodyguards we, we were running this game because we wanted a skink chief on his second on charging forward and getting stompy on people homie okay uh-huh. like that's that's what this okay. is you, you, it's wrong you got that you're you're making a spike appeal to the timmy crowd right. it's not gonna work the on timmy us. Crowd. clearly I have yet to see a single coalesce crow crawl. Uh, yeah, let's let's see it. All right, Giannis, what do you think about Seraphon in this rating? Does this feel too high, or what do you think? Um, no, I think they for me they were one of the contenders as well. Um, okay. I don't know about the competitive power level, but I think all of the rest yeah. works very well. Um, they, a couple of days ago, they showed the um, box set, the new one. I forgot the name of those. Um, not oh, Vanguard boxes. Yeah, yeah Vanguard. Yeah. And uh, I looked at it with a friend, and we loved all of the models. So the gray box. Yeah. yeah. And I, if I see that and those new versions of them, um, yeah, amazing. So that's why mm-hmm. I thought they might be a bit higher here. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Still, I mean, solid B territory seems good to me. All right, yeah. Slanesh. David C. So this is uh, Tyler. This is a person out of your group here, right? Yeah, Hammer of War, David. Yeah, that's right, Hammer of War, David. So fifty out of fifty-five on general play style. Oh, I feel we're going to come to different. David, we are going to come to very different places. I think David's in the <laughs> chat right now. Yeah, yes, there he is. Uh, uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to end up with very different lives on this one. Okay. Uh cool lack of npe eight out of ten i think slanesh is generally fun to play with and against silence 
Okay. Hey, how many how many Bliss Bob archers are you are you showing up with? Mm -hmm. Let's start. Mm -hmm. Let's start with that. For me, zero. But... And it's yeah. still annoying. <laughs> Would you like a die? Sure. Would you like a die? <laughs> Would you like a die? Would you like a die? Yeah, nobody. Lo everybody the loves that. Couple of games. It it. Oh man, it, it Ruth and uh, Worth and Quick. Words are hard. Yeah, that gets old. Uh, don't worry. I'm I'm gonna do a Slanesh one too. I I, I have that. Uh, no. I, I I just I'm gonna do mine at the end, and Gian Giannis and I will go through all of ours at the, at the end here and just kind of show some scores of how we rated them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, competitive power level thirty one out of thirty five. Uh, they probably need to get knocked down a little on the healthy position. They're probably still a little too strong as like the apparently preeminent gun line in the game right now. Uh, somehow that's true. I didn't realize that Slanesh was where you went if you wanted ranged power. Uh, that makes sense. Completely logical. So, and then uh, Verisimilitude, 35 out of 40. Um, I feels pretty good I, I i would probably i think mine he came out even higher but definitely i think uh dave and i are aligned there and then the other aspects um I, I think the cost collection is pretty expensive some of this the new kits especially especially are pretty high i might oh, give yeah. them, I, I don't know if i'm on a six or a five for this we'll see when i when i score but but i'm generally in the same sort of space as far as variety and painting opportunities and stuff like that yeah 100 percent. and then they should take a somewhat of a hit on ease of collection because they're they're fiddly fiddly um, and small and very detailed and yeah and so david comes to a total of 116 out of 150 is that right that's the that's the top is that the bottom of b or the top of c i don't remember would be the top of c uh, top of c yeah. all right well you know what david i might have been judged too quickly i think we might end up in actually the same place but we'll see we'll see you and i might be more aligned than you think okay all right and then lastly here for our sheet, let's take a look at Sylvaneth and we'll jump into some 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 just summary ones. Uh Sylvaneth, Tyler, I'd be interested to get your your take on this one as you are and forever a <laughs> Sylvaneth player, no matter when you, whether you're playing them or not. <laughs> this is our buddy David Sidebottom, who did uh, the Sylvaneth show with us uh, last show that we did. Awesome great, guy. Yeah. Great, great dude. Forty two out of fifty five on general play style, twenty seven out of thirty five on competitive power level, taking the biggest hit on the performance section, but having a very high marks on healthy position. Uh what what that NP score get? Eight out of ten or three out of ten? Good. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, David, I knew I liked the cut of that guy's jib. Okay. Yeah. That's a man who's honest. Because Sylvaneth <laughs> are NPE machines until you learn what you're like, you gotta until you like sort of learn the mechanics of the rube goldberg machine they're trying to set up right mm -hmm. but like for most players who play them and don't play sylvaneth often enough to learn it is an awful experience yeah just brutal awful. on average newer players yeah yeah uh versimilitude getting a 44 with four bonus points uh for oakenbrow alone basically and i'm with that i i grant those four bonus points it is awarded uh, Oak and Brow is the is the way. Uh, all all true Sylvaneth players play Oak and Brow. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, other aspects, getting the fifteen out of twenty for a total score of one hundred and twenty eight out of one hundred fifty. One of the higher scoring armies we've had, coming in in a solid B territory there. Uh, so there we uh, go. Well, he's he's cheating a little bit by making full use of the bonus. He was plus, making plus full use of the bonus points. Yes. <laughs> Getting a full eight points, though. Even without the bonus, he's still at a B. He's still at a B. Yeah, yeah. What do that you think about right that? right to me personally. Yeah, so uh, I'll try to go. Th so rules complexity, seven and a 13. That feels about right. Uh, the wide degree complexity, it is harder for newer players. Uh, balance, 10 out of 10. Uh, yes, that book, uh, maybe you could dock that one point, but generally I think that's about right. You know, like you can quibble on like Spite Revenants. I do think Dryads are a little sure. still undervalued. They've got a meaningful role. Uh, lack of MPE. Yep, nailed that. That needs to be a low score, variability of list. We had seen, dude, by far the most uh, variability of list in the last season than ever in the history of Sylvaneth. It was incredible. And the internal, uh, on that point, people need to be thinking about adapting their list to the season. I've just been seeing a lot of folks still running out the Spellsinger, Warsong, Revenant. Sure. 
that's not exactly where it's at in my mind. You really need to think about like some bugs, um, radiant spirit to help protect you against magic. You got a oaken brow, um, go trick. Darren just did great things with go trick and uh, tree lords and some other things. Uh, that's a nice power pair together. All right, I'm getting distracted as I always do. Internal power, eight out of eight. Uh, yeah, don't usually see a lot of allies, psychographic profile. To me, Johnny will be happy if actively sabotages Spike. Uh, yeah, there's not. I think that's. I think that's of... actually quite accurate. Yeah, I really do. That does. But I don't I think, know if you. Yeah. I think then it should be something like four of six. I agree. Yeah, exactly. You took the words out of my mouth. It should be four out of six in my mind. I think. Yeah. I think why it's he's hitting it harder is because it's not just that it mm -hmm. doesn't suit Spike. It's. It's actively anti-Spike, and it's not like it's perfectly Timmy mm. Johnny, right? Like, it plays in both those spaces. It's not the most Timmy, it's not the most Johnny, and it's, like, negative Spike. And I, I mm. actually agree with that read. I, I might have given it one more point, like a 3 out of 6 or something, but, I mean, we're really quibbling over over minor stuff here. I think it. I think that's an incredibly insightful point from David. I really do. I, mm. I, I, I hadn't yeah. thought about it in those terms until he put those words down, and I was like, yep, that is exactly mm -hmm. right. But if we would say that uh, half points are the barrier to fail, so he here you would say, does it fail the psychological uh, the psychographic profile? The so half points would be in total the fail sure, barrier. Sure, sure, sure. And I don't think that um, if it is in there and people like playing it, that it really fails what it's supposed to do. Sure. Okay. Totally fair. But overall, strong. I'm not sure I could have. I, if I would have scored this, I'm not sure it would have come into B territory. Um, I think I probably, this would be a C army to me, but I, I love it. And David's a great, doing a good evaluation there. All right, let's take a look at some roll-up scores, yeah. shall we? Hey, Vince, we've got a, some comments about it. looks like some of these were not adding the scores correctly. Specifically, Slanesh looks like it was missing. Some oh. people added up missing about 20 points. You scroll up in the comments. I'll go back and look. Let's look at Slanesh. What wasn't yeah. filled out? 50... 81. It may not have just been aggregating. 15. Oh, yeah, there. It didn't catch the last part. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's fine. All good. I'll, I'll fix it. Okay. Yeah, that one that, that one missed its its summary. So David actually should have been 10, 16, 132 out of, out of his, on Slanesh. Yeah. Now that makes mind. more sense. Out of his mind. Because <laughs> this one should have been 16. Yes, good catch. That was yeah. the, it. Didn't It didn't catch those points for some reason. So... There we go. Uh, no. Definitely not a high B-plus army. That is wild. Okay. Let's go back to this other one here. Sorry. There we go. So, e nope, that's mine. Let's get Giannis. I want to get yours up. Mm -hmm. All right. Giannis, you had four armies. You mm -hmm. raided Stormcast, Ogres, mm -hmm. Night Haunt, and War Clans. Uh, okay. So, um... Yeah, and like overall, your winner was War Clans. Now, were you doing the whole book here, not just Iron Jaws? You're you're, right there, you're seeing this as the combined force, right? Okay, so everybody can see the scores here. Take us through. Uh, you take us through your thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the War Clans, I talked to the friend who played them, and uh, so I always played against them. So there was this discussion about them, and um, so additionally to what we said for the Iron Jaws. We both completely agree on everything. Um, we mm. thought about, uh, and we and I looked a bit at the um, meta de, meta meta representation of um, the war clans that the crew boys seem to be uh, better than they were before, and the uh, bone splitters as well. Um, and I think that they <clears throat> are a solid B list. I think right now, right? Um, yeah, you're right into B mm -hmm. territory. Yep. Because if you look at the complete book, I think you can find um, so the Timmy in the um, Iron Jaws, of course. Uh, but I think the Cruel Boys, although I personally don't like them in their visual appearance that much, I think they work for what they are supposed to be. So if I mm. think of Iron Jaws, they are these this this metal armor, yeah, machine that rolls towards you. Um, the bone splitters have this wilderness savage uh, vibe in them, and I think for the um, cruel boys, this idea that they are—so I played a lot of Diablo in the last couple of weeks—this rogue mm. character that uh, can be shooty, that can be uh, melee, that uses poison, and I think the models reflect that very well. And I think um, mm. so. I of course cannot 
say anything about the competitive power level. But on those parts, I think the book works quite well. And um, again, with the idea of the big war to bring it together, um, I think that this fits very well. So you could take points for the competitive power level you could give them, uh, I don't know. Um, but I do like the rest of uh, the rest of it. It's funny because it's the highest scoring army, but it's some of your lower points on performance and healthy uh, position, right? Like only Stormcast did worse in your list. And yet, you know, the rest of this stuff was, was high enough. It brought it back up. So that's interesting, right? Yeah. And then everybody else is firmly in B territory there. Ogre Maw Tribes at 112. Or sorry, firmly in C territory. I apologize. Uh, Ogre Maw Tribes at 112. Uh, Night Haunt at 109. And then Stormcast Eternals taking that big hit mainly in competitive power, which I would tend to agree with, down at 99 points. Still a C. They're still squeaking in there with a C. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but they're, 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 they're still passing the class. Uh, but, but, but not a great score overall. The Stormcast are my first and main army, and they annoy me to no end, although I love them fully. I like them. <laughs> but when I started, I bought them because I thought they were a starter army, and I've got a basement full of minis that I have not painted. I have painted something like four or 5,000 points at least. Yeah. I think I have at least 3,000 or 4,000 more in the basement because they are too convoluted. I think I counted, mm. if I count the new model, um, something like 15 uh, war, war scrolls with the, with, with the withered um, keyword. And as a new player, it is impossible to understand what is happening there. And that mm. brings me to no end because that's not what they're supposed to be. And I think. Um, and you what were, should they, what are they supposed to be in your mind? What are they supposed to be? I think they should be an in for newer player because they market mm. uh, as a beginner friendly. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something that uh, you wrote down in your uh, list for the Stormcast uh, so that you can see this development from first to second and third edition. And mm. my problem is that they don't, that they lose uh, very similitude on the way because they are so different. So when the, yeah. in, in terms of law as well. So at first Sigma sent out the liberators to liberate the mortal realms. And mm. okay, they don't look like liberators more or less to me they look too heavy then you've got the um second edition with the wizards you've got the vanguard in between and with the new edition um i really like the models uh, but they seem to be more like those who could walk for a mile in their uh, armor because the liberator mm. armor looks much too too heavy and in this way you have got different roles that they would take on in the law and in the game and i think they fail there especially in the mm. battle line idea. So um, they are protectors. They are liberators. Um, they are uh, heroes. They are dragon riders, but they have different kinds of mounts as well. Then they have got griff hounds and uh, sniper bows. And it's too much. Simply, mm. they don't know what they are. They are getting better. I thought about this when we thought Neve today, that they might change the uh, armor to the Thunderstrike armor. Maybe they might include a couple of old heroes and um, form more of those, um, yeah, those hero units or something like this. Um, but they have to do something. It's, mm. I don't see a 4.0 book without a reduction of War Scrolls. Sure. I, Let's talk about Maw Tribes yeah. and your scoring there, because that's the first time we've touched really ogres uh, in this. So let's let's get high paywos in the chat. What's up, buddy? I hope you're doing well. Uh, the 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 Maw Tribes coming in at a at a high C at 112, uh, looking pretty solid, kind of across the board there. There's some you know your your biggest hits uh, aren't really you know anywhere. It's all just like some minor points being docked here and there, right there. They're they're doing well, kind of across the board. No obvious Achilles heel, right? Maybe psychographic profile where they only hit fifty percent. They got three out of six. You know, if you evaluate by percentage, which which is probably generally true, <laughs> right? I don't know. I don't know how they play, but um, so I'm mostly a Johnny player, and uh, they have got a couple of heroes that theoretically have different functions. Um, You've got the uh, monster truck version there as well. So you've got big monsters, which they should have. I do like the idea uh, that they are either hungry or uh, eating. Um, 
that fits very well. Uh, I can't say much about the competitive level. I did like, so in my game uh, with uh, Benny, I played um, the Iron Blaster, which did what it looked like. So it's a gigantic sure. cannon that blasts things. Um, yeah, mm. perfect. Of course, they are a bit older, but I think the newer, some of the newer models uh, look great. I like the pirate. I did not like the last hero. Uh, he did not fit. He was too close to the older design. Um, so at the moment, I'm quite, I really enjoy painting them. Yeah, they're a very I, fun army to paint. They really are. Like, in fact, the only thing I would have moved them up on maybe slightly or that I would quibble here is you gave them a six out of eight on the cost of collection. I would have probably moved that up to a seven just because there's so many of these ogres that are available secondhand on the market. You can usually get them quite cheap. They've had a lot of good battle force boxes and stuff where you like, especially if you're into gut busters. If you're into BCR, it's a tougher row to, 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 to plow. But but if you're into to the gut buster side, there you go. But still there, you uh, need the older heroes as well. And um, sure. in one of our sessions, I painted the uh, pirate, which I really like. Yep. Many, uh, and those models, you can just throw away. Just They need to go forever. Mm. <laughs> which, uh, the Slaughtermaster. Um, so there are some points of improvement and they are still quite expensive it's not like they are 10 bucks or something like that they are yeah i don't know 23 mm. euros or something i don't know yep like uh, what haywell said here they're the ultimate 50 percent army mm -hmm. <laughs> yep very good all right let me bring up my scores here and then we'll bring this to a little close so I rated Stormcast, Skaven, S2D, Iron Jaws, Suns, Slanesh, Lumineth, and Soulblight Gravelords. Um, sorry for the Fire Slayers players. We didn't have any Fire Slayers ratings. I don't think we had anybody who plays Fire Slayers to rate them, which is not surprising being that only four people in the continental United States play them. So it was very hard to get a hold of them to fill out a sheet. Um, but with, you know. with apologies to my friend Ken, whom I could have reached out to, but I would have missed out on this bit because this is our version of Jimmy Kimmel and Matt Damon, and sure. I'm here for it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, exactly. Oh, we were going to have some Fire Slayers uh, discussion on the show, but we just had to cut it for time. Had to All cut right, it for time. Stormcast for me got 113, firmly in the C territory, but like higher end uh, of it, and the reason there where I really hit them you know, performance and healthy and quality of rules, all that stuff took a hit. But overall, I did rate them quite highly on things like the cost of collection, the ease of collection, painting. I, I gave them some big scores on all that because I felt mm -hmm. like that's where they're really, really strong. And I get what you said, Giannis, about the, the resonance and all that, but for me, it all lands. I never really thought about the difference between the two armor types and stuff like that. I just like them in general. They feel like dudes who sit down and beachhead. You know, like they show up on lightning and then... And then Thunderstruck plays and they just start crushing heads. And like, you know, that, that all works for me. Um, there, there is, like, I, I hit them decently on the variability of lists. The, the balance I hit them really, really hard on. Um, just because I think that is like their, that is their glaring weak spot. I mean, I just, I think that's awful. Um, Skaven. One, I thing, oh, one thing on Stormcast. One yeah. thing on Stormcast. I'm curious your, your feeling on this. Yeah. So, to me, often with Stormcast, they, I mean, they're supposed to be these uh, supernatural beings, these walking deities, walking gods. Uh, they don't feel like it often on the table. They no, the verisimilitude over... of that misses a little, like, if you read them in the stories and stuff. But, like, I don't know. I think they are still pretty strong. Like, it's the, the number of mortal wounds in the game makes you not feel like that. But if you ever play against something with a mostly three-up save Stormcast army that doesn't exactly. have a lot of mortal wounds... You do right. feel like you're pretty untouchable, you know? Yeah, which is what, and it, and it can be annoying. As, yeah, I was plus four stack yesterday. Like, I get it. But, like, that's what they have to lean into. And you hope you hope sure. that you don't go up against Mortal Wound spam. So, it, yeah, it's it's these, like, extremes that you run into. Yeah, Mortal Wound yeah, spam yeah. is just going to take me off the table. But this is my only out. This is one of my outs that I still have as a Stormcast player to try to compete against all these newer books. So right. it's, it, it's, it's weird. But yeah, you know, I had like a in a tournament game once I was playing against Bone Splitters, and I had a unit of Vindictors on cover, and I got mm. charged by like a, just a mound of different Bone Splitters. Right, I, I couldn't even tell you what they were because who knows that every every unit in that army looks exactly the same, right? But like, I mean, yeah. these dudes, it was like the scene at the end of of uh, Alien versus Predator. It was awesome mm. because the piece of terrain was just a big set of stairs. Okay. 
And my Vindictors were, like, slowly dying as they're getting hit by, like, every orc that can get in the space to get at them. But we're, like, backing up the stairs, right, basically, as I, as I would move. And yeah. it was just so hard for him to bring down those five Vindictors in cover with, like, one buff on them, right? Right. Like, they yeah. sat forever in that fight and just, like... Mm just stabbed it because they have to have that big spear and shield look too. So it really did look, look like the sort of end of the movie spoilers, I guess for alien versus spreader or whatever. Um, but like, it just felt like the end of that movie so much. And like the end of the game, there was still one alive. Right. Yeah. And, and despite, and like that dude was tying up like two massive unit of works. They, did they kill anything? Not really. Like they stabbed a couple yeah. orcs to death. Right. But it just felt like so cool, and so you know that that I think you can hit that right, uh, especially if you're yeah. if you're not against like mortal wounds, spam stuff, right? Sure. Skaven, I surprised myself. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I thought they were gonna score higher for me, but honesty, like I tried to be quite uh, objective here. Rules complexity, eight out of thirteen. Hit them real hard. Balance on a five. So many dead units. Lack of NPE, 9 out of 10. Very close. This is a nearly NPE-free army. It's the most fair army in Warhammer. I stick to that. Uh, I mean, it just, like, mm. they, like they've like they just... It plays Warhammer. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah what does pretty, it pretty true, especially, do that's legitimately yeah. NPE? Uh, the, the answer uh, is the overcharges thing. a warp lightning cannon and gets and rolls the one and gets <laughs> sure. 12 mortal wounds. Like, that's... Yeah. You've got your Merciless Blizzard, uh, Skitter, Leap Trick. You've got sure. your, what, Deceiver, which, which Vermin Lord can... Teleport six inches turn, away, the Deceiver. Turn on, always strike last on your opponent, and then they get out of dodge, which slows your opponent's hammer down for a turn. So that's not really MP. That's just that's just good play. That's just a cool play. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's not a lot. Yeah. Right. I mean, I just think they're, they, it's, a, it's a very fair army. Um, very high variability of lists, eight out of eight. It's the only army I scored that got an eight out of eight on the variability of lists. Cause I mm -hmm. have been making Skaven lists since the time that book came out and I've never played the same list twice. And I have used so many different things in that book. It is wild how mm -hmm. many different ways you can build lists in the Skaven book. It is a paramount example of that kind of variability and mm -hmm. so on. They took some big hits on performance and healthy position and quality of the rules. Even even though there is some alignment there, it's not as good as it should be um, in the current season. Uh, it's not as good as other armies. Um, but then, like, is Resonance Thankwals... and that kind of stuff, they killed on. Yeah. Is Thankwills on Leash Hell MP? Somebody mentioned that in the comment. Uh, like, the skateboard could be an issue previously, but that's he, gone. Yeah, he can't launch like, it's, it it's anymore. Very... Like, yeah, don't, don't charge don't really... him with a horde. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Like, like, ah. Uh... Oh, oh, don't, don't. Look, uh, as Zoxy Strobin, and I see what you're doing. Don't, don't, don't go there. I'm, I'm, I'm being well behaved this show. Sure. All right, let's not, let's have a, let's not have a false equivalency hour here. All right, moving on. Sorry, I interrupted you. Resonance. No, no, you're good. They took a big hit on ease of collection. Total of 109, firmly in the C territory. I thought I'd rate them higher, but when I honestly answered these questions, that was the answer. And mm. that was what was fun about this. It's like, if I if I think objectively about, or, or, sorry, if I think about sort of how I feel about Skaven, man, I love them. Like, they're one of my favorite armies to play. I play them all the time, you know, um, near weekly. And I love having the game. But like, when I rate them across these things, I'm like, yeah, th there's obvious weaknesses and this really points it out, right? So, that's that's what I'll say. Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I think they're, they're good. One of those armies where again, like you know, I talked with you about Keegan Graves, a good, good player. At, he went five out of Bug Eater. When when you put Skaven right now in the hands of folks who know what they're doing, and you know, they, you they're one of those armies you can get a lot out of them with with experience and a lot of thought going into your list building and preparation. It, yeah, I, I find them fascinating in that regard. It's like they really can punch above their weight. I think. In, in yeah. the hands of certain players. So I know that that can, can be true with every army, but I do think this is more pronounced than your average army. Sure. But yeah. Yeah. Slaves and Iron Jaws were tied for my two highest, firmly in the B territory, both coming in at 123 points, though for different reasons. Um, but across the board, scored pretty well. Uh, I like both of them, though for very different reasons. Like Iron Jaws, much lower on the uh, quality of rules and stuff like that. Uh, 
or not much mm-hmm. lower, but lower, um, whereas hitting higher in some of the other categories. So pretty in line with some of the other the other S2D results, like firmly in that B territory. Um, Sons of Bamot, we hadn't talked about them yet, so I rated mm. them out. Uh, they got a 98, which I think puts them at the very bottom of C. Ooh. Right? Is that right? <laughs> like, that's that's rough. But, I mean, there's just so much misalignment there between how you think they should play and how they do play. Really? Um, yeah, like, because they, they feel like you'd think they'd be a go-forward and smash army, but they're not. Their current rules are not that. They they will just whiff like crazy and basically do no damage. Um, I don't know, dude. At least for my money, I think always thought of them as an ambushing army, and they have such a unique ambushing mechanic. The Sons of Bamos? Like, at least... Oh, I'm sorry. I had I had Beast of Chaos. For some reason, gotcha. I just had a complete mental meltdown. Okay. I thought you were talking about Beast Beast of no, Chaos. No. You're all good. You're all good. <laughs> no Sons. Like I like no Beast. I think would score oh, pretty okay. highly. I, I'm sure if I rated Beast, I'd actually put him for pretty firmly into B territory. Um, I I probably could have rated Beast. It's just been a while since I've played them. I haven't really played yeah. them in 3.0, so I didn't feel comfortable. I played the army quite a lot in 2.0 and had a great time with it. I, and this is what happens, Giannis, when you read the chat and you try to talk. It just it doesn't it doesn't work. <laughs> it takes takes years to develop that skill, Tyler. You're good. I was wondering how the uh, giants were hiding for the ambush. Um, that's right. Yeah, that's very <laughs> sneaky. It's on that one battle plan where you can remove D three uh, mob D three units. Yeah. Um, no, I mean these guys just took huge hits in lots of categories, rules complexity, are, all yeah. sorts of stuff. But they are not what this is for. Because they lack the variety to um, right. mm-hmm. have a broader, um, to paint a broader picture of of a psychographic profile. So they are one of those who will lose points simply because yeah. they are not more than they are. Yep. Yeah. That being said, it's the army I'm playing in the current season. I'm pretty sure in taking a tournament. I'm going to take it to Nashcon in a couple of weeks. So, hey, you know, there you go. It's, like, what do I know? It's solid. It's solid right now. Yeah. Like I still have fun with it, but I believe in this scoring. Like I think I think this book has so much space for improvement in the future, but boy oh boy. Sure. Uh Slanesh and Lumineth at eighty four, folks. Eighty four. <laughs> Crushed them both. Uh the <laughs> army I hate most and the army I love most came in at the same score. That was a fascinating journey for me to go on. I just want to say that. <laughs> Like I like Slanesh oh, and Orskaven are both the things I love most in this game and always will. Um, they're both my oldest loves in this game. The armies I've played for you know twenty years or more. Skaven are coming up on thirty actually, as a matter of fact. And, uh, but Slanesh, uh, deep love and Lumineth. I there's no there's no army I hate more. Unabashed, uh, Lumineth hater over here. Uh, I play mm. against them all the time. And, uh, and, and so I've, I've, I've had my fill, uh, of this particular army. Uh, <laughs> I've spent, I've spent so much of my life since this book released playing my games under the effect of total eclipse. It's shocking. <laughs> uh, it does make, I'm, I, I will say though, I've developed a pretty good skill for command point, uh, like how mm-hmm. to spend my command points properly. But all, when, when you're so used to playing games where they cost double, you get much better at like when do you actually need to use a command point? I'll say that. So play under yeah. under situations yeah. of scarcity. Hmm. But yeah, both got an eighty four. I mean, there's just there's just tons of places where both these armies lost points for me, all over the place. Mm-hmm. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, are they beginner friendly armies? Would you say that? No, no, neither. There might be a connection between them being beginner friendly, so rules complexity and quality of rules here. Maybe. I mean, that's why they mm. both got threes out on the on the ease of collection, right? Um, but like, but at the same time, variety and painting, ah, I gave them both max scores because I do actually think that they're both beautiful ranges. Um, so there you go. But I meant mm. not painting, but uh, playing. Yeah, so yeah, I got gotcha. you. No, absolutely. Idea. Yeah, I, I agree with that. No, I was just saying, like when I, when I took the holistic of the starter army into into account, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then finally, my soul blight score was 108, putting them firmly in the C territory. Not that a little bit lower than some of the other people rated. Um, mm. so I like I I put them down a peg. I was I was docking them. Uh, I didn't dock them quite as much. Like there competitively, I still kept them at an eight out of ten for performance and a seven out of ten for for healthy. I think there are some obvious. And by the way, 
when I thought about that, I tried to think about that in terms of all of their sub factions performance, mm. which they've had a few yeah. really outsized and a few that are just like absolutely terrible. Mm. Right. And so there's stuff like that that I was trying to think of. Like, I don't think mm-hmm. you're, 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 you're feeling in a healthy position if you decide that Avon Gory is your thing. Sure. Yeah. Right. So that's just my scores. But what are yours? Uh, so as I said, uh, we're going to all, 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 we'll all close out in a second. But what I, as I said, yeah. I'm going to grab a version of the Excel sheet. Um, I'll probably use this summary sheet for folks because it does have another tab with the full explanation on it. So you can use either one you want. There's the full explanation and it does have this. Um, so I'll probably grab a version of this, try to throw it into a Dropbox, and then I will post it down in the show notes and I'll put it and I'll tweet it out as well. Um, so that people can fill out this thing for themselves and see how they would score their own armies and stuff like that, or, or armies they play against. Um, and then we can share those around, you know, share out your results and what your scores came to. I think it'll be really interesting if people, people do that, like dropped it, you score it out yourself and then drop it down in the comments. How did your army score out? Um, love to see it. Uh, yeah. Now, Tyler, what, what are we, where are we closing that? What do you think? So Giannis, oh. What ended up being your highest score and what was your highest score going in to this? What was your prediction highest score and your actual highest score? So I've raised out a bit, a few more that I did not share just to try it out. And um, I think the Auric Walk clans have won for me. Um, okay. Although I thought it would be Slaves to Darkness. And after this show, I think um, the general opinion would be that Slaves to Darkness would be the winners, right? So we did not talk that be They've come high. out quite strong so far. Yeah. And, and the results yeah. so far, they've come out quite strong. Like, like I think if we were just going to actually pick a best out of everything we've seen so far, it would be S2D. Yeah. So we are, of course, lacking um, more... Uh, so more factions, of course, and uh, they were not that yeah. many um, for Seraphon, for example. Um, I think Soulblight were one of my one of those where I thought, okay, they could mm. win this. Um, but there were some mixed experiences there as well. Um, yeah. I, again, I'm a beginner, so <laughs> what do I know? No, no, it's, no all good. Uh, perspective is yeah. All, all opinions uh, are, are are valid here when you've got ex- experience with the thing. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. No matter starting because because that beginner perspective matters too. We, it's not that's like saying somebody who's who's deeply experienced that colors and biases them. I don't mean that in any negative way. It just means there's a, there's a bias both directions, right? Yeah. Go ahead, mm-hmm. Tom. So yeah, going in, I would have just reading a blind. I would have guessed slaves to darkness as my number one. I would have had a bias with Nurgle, thinking Nurgle would be pretty high, which it was in my personal rank. I was surprised to score Gits. I mean, as I told you guys near the start, that was the first one we went through on me. They were the highest. So I would be very curious to hear how some other folks feel about Gits, if I'm an outlier in that regard. Uh, Giannis, you did mention there are a number of factions. I mean, we're not going to be here for four hours, unfortunately. Uh, We should be, clearly, but but somebody doesn't like to do four-hour shows. He's he's negative sometimes. You just have to pull up with him. I, so, I am your NPE, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we didn't touch on some factions. Uh, we'd love to see comments. People, obviously, will get this out. So if, if you, we didn't do a faction, please do it. You know, KO, Ideneth, let's uh, Zinch. So with apologies to all of those. Vince, same question to you. Where were you going in as your prediction? And, and I wasn't tracking your overall scores. Where did you end up as your highest? Uh, Slaves and Iron Jaws tied for my highest. Um, I didn't think Iron Jaws would score that high, but I ended up like that. Mm. That was sort of just a natural thing. Like I literally just tried to take each question in turn as I was answering it. I didn't think about the broader army. Um, mm-hmm. I thought Skaven would have scored a lot higher for me. I really did. Mm. Um, like if you would have asked me, I would have thought Skaven would have been a super high score just because of my sort of perception of them, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, and yet you know there it was. Um, we didn't get a BOC because none of us, Vosk, had enough information, but we'll share this out. I'd love to see some BOC scores as well. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we didn't We didn't get anybody who who played BOC. We tried to farm it out to, to a wide group of people, so we had more than just the three of us. Um, I thought the... I, I mean, I did think that, that Lumineth and Slanesh would get a low score for me, and I was right. I mean, I'm just... I'm, I'm outwardly mm-hmm. biased. I can't help it. Like, I tried not to be harsh or mean, but like, I just, it's how I feel about the army, right? Like it is a subjective yeah. experience in the end. 
and that's more or less how it came out. Um, I thought Suns would honestly score a little higher, but I mean, I had to hit them in all the mm-hmm. places where they just failed, fell down. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was, I think, by the way, if I scored Nurgle, an army I don't generally like very much, uh, uh, like mm. not very much at all. I think if I did score Nurgle, I probably could. I've played against Nurgle quite a lot. And, and uh, I, I think if I scored him, I'd actually rate him pretty high. I think that, I think my score, honestly, mm-hmm. Tyler, wouldn't come in that much different from yours. Like when I read your scores, I think your scores are more or less exactly how I would have answered Nurgle. Um, so it mm-hmm. is interesting when there's armies you don't personally like or they don't attach to you, but you score them out through this and you're like, yeah, no, that's that's a solid B army, even though I don't like it, right? And, and it's the difference yeah. between kind of where your personal tastes fall and stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? Okay. Yeah, this was a lot of fun, guys. Thank you again, Giannis, for doing this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, this Giannis. Exciting. Great time. Thank you very uh, much. There was, uh, there was one thing that I thought about uh, on the way uh, back home today. Um, this is not AOS specific. I think you could... Mm. Eat- play around with 40k and then you can compare 40k and aos and things like that um, oh boy mm. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere okay thank you for so, having me oh absolutely sir absolutely uh so with that i will say thank you all of you for watching if you haven't yet hit that like button hey please do so uh it, we really appreciate it. it helps other people find the show and and all that stuff it keeps us going uh, but thank you so much. Hit like, hit subscribe, do all those things that make all those dings. Uh, and, uh, if you want to support the show, you can, there's a Patreon link down below. There's all the games that Adam and I publish under Snarling Badger Studios down below. If you want to check those out, Majestic 13, Space Station Zero, and Rain in Hell. Uh, appreciate that. That the Tyler edits, by the way. So he's also, he's also <laughs> involved in this project. Uh, mm-hmm. but at any rate... Thank you all so much uh, for watching. We really appreciate it, as always.